Hello, good evening and welcome to Wales and the village of the Damned. These are just some of last night's terrifying events. Was she a witch? You asked yes. me that, didn't yeah, yeah. you? In a word, yes. He's still breathing, so... I can get a paramedic now. I want a paramedic Stuart. now. Careful! What's the matter? Oh, there it is again! There it is again! There Did you hear it? Yeah. Oh, what was that? No, no, no. Satan, Lord of Darkness, ruler of the underworld. Oh, got you, I've got you, I've got you. Get off us! I'll be just dragged into that room. Push him! Can you push him? Can you? They weren't witches at all, they weren't healers, they were just nasty pieces of work that deserved to die. Welcome to night three of our Halloween Horror Fest. We are in Wales, in an amazing place, spread almost over 160 acres. This was home to nearly 2,000 people, patients and carers. The village was totally self-sufficient with its own farm, blacksmith, carpenters, everything that a village would need. But it also was home to some amazingly frightening claims of ghosts, witches and demons and other creatures of the dark imaginings are these really claims that are true as a result of an overactive imagination well that is what we aim to find out over the coming nights but before i reveal more about tonight's area of investigation let me introduce to you the two gentlemen who will be guiding us through our coming adventures mr paul ross and julian clegg <laughs> We're fine. The big question is, how are you after that amazing night last night? It went right the way up to the wild, right the way until midnight. You were still investigating. I know. I was a little bit spooked when all of a sudden we started sort of hearing that there were six witches with us. I thought, oh no, here comes Pendle Hill all over again. And especially when our sound man David starts to feel choking, I thought, oh no, it's happening again. So it was a bit freaky. And we had lots of reaction from the, the people at home about that because a new member of the crew getting yeah. something happening to him, they love all that. Yeah, it was amazing. I'm looking forward to tonight. And those remarkable scenes when Brian Shepherd was pulled into that room by some presence, some spirit. He said that had never happened to him before. I know. Well, I heard it um, back in my earpiece later on, and that was, I think, more frightening because I couldn't see the pictures and I still haven't seen them, but it sounded horrific. And in about an hour's time, we've got details on last night's revelation about the number 51 yes. and some remarkable footage coming up from last night that we hadn't noticed at the time. That's oh, all really? after night. I yep. don't even know about that. How okay. exciting. <laughs> well, you sit tight, Yvette. Okay. Julian, what's in store for us tonight? Right, well, coming up, we're going to be chatting to Yvette and Carl, and a bit more about where we are. We're in a, an abandoned uh, mental asylum built in the early 1800s. Here say, says there's uh, rumours of witches and demons and ghosts and ghouls. A perfect location for our Most Haunted Life special for Halloween 2008. So, turn down the lights, grab a cup of coffee, hide behind a cushion, stay right there and this is what's coming up over the next hour. Well, as manager of the paranormal team, um, I'm here as a bit of a, in a, a guiding role. So I will instigate which rooms we'll go into um, and which methods of investigation we'll use. The history of magic in North Wales can be traced back to the original pagan religions of the British Isles. We know, for example, that ancient Celtic religion was guided by a priestly magician caste known as Druids. Gauls from the continent are said to have travelled to Britain for initiation into the mysteries. The knowledge was passed on only by word of mouth. My initial feeling here is probably, apart from anything else, and there seems to be quite a lot of a residual uh, um, activity and energy down here, but um, foremost probably are uh, three figures. <laughs> So more great. 
great films coming up about the show, about the location over the next hour. But first, let's meet the stars of the show. Will you give a big, warm, most haunted live welcome to Yvette Fielding and Carl Beatty? <laughs> Hello, you two. Hello. Hello. So last Hello. night was amazing. And, and the whistling to start with was extraordinary, wasn't it? The whistling, um, the first time I heard whistling that was continuous like that was in Turin. Um, and I got very excited when I said, copy me, and I whistled three times. And then you heard the whistle sort of trying to do it three times. Yeah. It was the most amazing thing. And I think David is our new sound man. Is somebody whistling in the audience now on a joke? <laughs> It was you. Sit yourself down. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm like that when we go out shopping. Who's whistling? Who's tapping? <laughs> well, actually, I was with them last night after the show, and we were in a hotel sort of foyer area, and there was tapping there, wasn't there? Was. There was, yeah, mm. definitely. It was amazing. It was really, it was, yes, I won't say any more, but it does seem to happen quite a lot around yeah. us when you're minding your own business. So, what did you think of last night? Uh, I, I absolutely loved last night. I, I, for the first time ever, I actually got quite uneasy, especially when we were doing this incantation thing, and, and we were all sitting outside the, 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 the circle of protection. And even though, you know, I, 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 I do that purposefully, I, I don't want the protection, I want to take it as fully as it can go, there was, there was a slight unease there, but the funniest thing was, was anybody who went even close to that circle, you had this group of people scouring, I mean, they went, oh, get away, get away, and you, you weren't allowed yeah, yeah. anywhere near it. I mean, at yeah. one point I was going to jump in just for a laugh, and I honestly thought they would have actually lynched me. <laughs> which is bizarre. Absolutely yeah. bizarre. I, the, the other thing about last night, uh, I mean, we had the situation with Brian, which we're going to hear more about later in the show, but that was really scary. Yeah, as I said before, I, I, I didn't see it, so but yeah. you were there. I mean, Carl. It was scary. It, it was scary because um, it's very difficult to explain it, and not the whole thing was caught. You need it all caught on wide shot so you yeah. can see everything. But... Yeah, Brian was actually at one point pulled off of his feet. I mean, his feet, he was pulled back, so he couldn't... And you can't do that. Something has to do that to you. And it's like almost someone had put a piece of rope behind him and pulled... And I know uh, uh, Kieran was trying to say, let him go, because he wanted to see where he was going to be pulled to. And obviously Stuart was thinking the worst, that he was going to go through the window, so he was trying to pull him back. Um, so there's a bit of a tussle going on there, and it was quite a frightening, mm. quite a frightening thing. Him. Well, look, stay, stay there, because we've got uh, another film about our fans, and the most haunted live fans are uh, uh, um, amazing, and we're going to be looking at uh, a film with uh, Carolyn a bit later on. Also, of course, Saturday night mm. at nine, yes. it's on Living, the new show, Living With You Too, with yes. Yvette and Carl. Living oh, With Yvette and Carl. Yeah. Um, no, we decided <laughs> to let the cameras in our house, and uh, so you should tune in. <laughs> like, like, like anyone would want to live with us. Yeah. <laughs> you see what Carl's really like to yeah. live with. Well, I'm look, lovely. Yeah. yeah but it, it's great fun, though, as well. There's yes. some poignant moments, as we saw last night on the show. Yes. But have a look at this clip okay. from Saturday. Have uh, we? Oh, no, <laughs> Um, the house is about 500 years old, and this originally was, a, was the barn. We weren't too sure about the deer's head, especially Carl being a vegetarian. You know, I've always, Carl, I've always wanted to do that. That looks such great fun. Well, when, 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 why don't you come over and do oh, it? Yeah. Do, I, I will. Yeah. Health and safety, though, worries yeah. me slightly. You won't, you won't walk out alive. <laughs> <It'll be fine. laughs> and that fireplace. I know. I made it myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit earlier. A bit yeah, earlier. Was really good. But did you like having the cameras around all the time, though? Because I mean, people have said on these sort of fly-on-the-wall documentaries, you forget about it. Do you forget about it, Carl? Yes, you do. You, you yeah. actually do. You, you kind of... Um, uh, the, it's usually the first week you're a bit sort of... You know, I, I don't want to go downstairs to the kitchen because I don't want to, you know, I want to make sure my hair's done or whatever. Yeah. And um, there's a point where you realise that there's no point in that because they're usually right there anyway when you wake up. <laughs> and it's fine. You, you yeah. do get absolutely used to it. I mean, I just didn't bother with makeup at the end. It's <laughs> wart, wart, spots and all, and a moustache. It's fine. I didn't shave. <laughs> now, I mentioned Carolyn, our, our most taunted life fan. Every, every night we're doing a film about one of our fans. Just before we do the film, I mean, we ought to say 
uh, the fans make the show, don't they? They're brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I and mean, we couldn't do it without you. Thank you very much. I made a joke. We were sort of talking before, talking to the audience about the pumpkins and everything, saying they're all rubbish. Uh, but they're not. They're fantastic. Yeah. And thank you very, very much for coming. And, we, and we've, we asked, people, we've yeah. asked people to bring pumpkins to yeah. the show, and they have, and they're superb. And we're going to see a few in a few minutes. But let's look at, uh, yes, our fans' film number three. Here's Carolyn. <laughs> Just hungry. Hungry? No, I'm not even hungry. The majority of the girls that are with me tonight are probably going to be cats, as this is their first investigation, really, um, because we've come here as a special Halloween treat for us all. So who's going to be screaming like cat then? Yeah. <laughs> Just you. Uh, I'm going to look after us. Yeah. So There's going to be a lot of screaming, I think, with us. <laughs> Craigenlaws is a castle just at the tippy tippy end of Brecon Beacon National Park, which is a beautiful part of Wales anyway. And it's a lovely castle, it's well worth coming to see. And I wanted to come to scare my friends, and me, and my mother. This tour is very real, unlike most tours, there's nothing fabricated. No one's going to jump out on you, we don't have invisible strings. Going on the tour, I'm really, really excited. I'm nervous, I'm anxious, I'm just thrilled to be here tonight. Don't follow me, please. Stay one behind the other. Hold on the yeah. please. I'm really excited that Most Haunted Live is going to be for seven whole nights in Wales. There's a lot of ghosts here to prove, and I'll be watching all of those nights with the computer in the corner so I can watch those webcams. It's just going to be a real exciting seven nights. Put my children to bed early, bless them, <laughs> get to bed, Yvette's on. <laughs> I really hope that this year's Most Haunted Live at Halloween can live up to it. I really do think it can. I hope we'll let you stomach though. <laughs> Kill us out with your stomach love. If not, get the hands of hell in this <laughs> Well, it's really been exciting so far. We've had a bit of unexplained rumblings, and some have been explained as tummy rumblings, but there is definitely an unexplained rumbling. We're going to go to another room now and see what happens down there, and hopefully we'll have a bit more activity. So good luck at the live, and uh, at Most Haunted Live, and we'll see you there. Take care. The lovely Carolyn Webster, one of our most haunted live super fans. Now, if you think you'd like to have a film made about you as a super fan, you can. All you have to do is email mhl3 at anticsproductions.com. And who knows, it could be your film on the show one night. So get in touch and uh, we look forward maybe to seeing you, which is brilliant. Great, great film there, and Karen, lovely lady. What a, I'd like to meet her. Yeah. She, she's not here, unfortunately, is she not? No? No, I know oh, she's not. what a shame, but, but hello. Yeah. What a nice lady. So it's really good. Yeah. Uh, Carl, I mean, the, the fans, I mean, they queue up to come to the shows, they, the, the tickets sell out, well, they're not for sale, but they go so quickly. I mean, it really is extraordinary, isn't it? It, it, it is, it is very extraordinary, but, um, and we always try to get out and see, see, the, see the fans as best we can. Um, it's been really kind of busy the last couple of days because of the, the, the location and stuff, what we have to do. But um, we like to get on and try and say hello. And, and it's working. The, the, the show works with the fans because today we've had so many fans uh, coming in early on. People who have watched the show, so, some um, people who worked here. Uh, and we've had a couple of people who have been inmates here have come in and said that some of the stuff we've come up with, they can verify. There's some stuff about the drawings that um, Brian has come up with that they, they can put a name to some of these drawings. So yeah. 
it, it's, it's great. It's, it's, it's working perfectly with, with everyone being involved. And we, that's why we need all the fans to help out. And if you're wondering what the sound is, that it's is the rain. Water, yeah. Just to prove it's this building. There's nothing paranormal. <laughs> <laughs> this, this really, part of this building is literally open to the elements. Yeah. Um, now, we've got, talking of fans, people on the phone to talk to as well, event, right. Carl. So let's go to the lines and say, hello, Laura in Kent. Hello. Hello. Hello, hello Laura. <laughs> now, what's your question? If you were a ghost, what prank would you play on an investigation team? <laughs> Carl, <laughs> I'd stick my fingers in holes. <laughs> right, <laughs> I don't mind. Family show before the watershed. A vet. <laughs> Lost for words again. Um, I'd give everybody wedgies. I think that would be quite funny. That would be funny. Yeah. What about you, Laura? Um, I'd probably make ra blow raspberries behind their heads or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you Good watching one. the show on your own tonight, or are you with people, or what? Oh, I've got my husband here, keeping me company. Right, well, have a great night tonight. Thanks for coming on, on the show, all right? Thanks. Take care. That's Bye. Laura in Bye. 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 Right, let's head off uh, to Lancashire, not far from where we are here in North Wales. And hello, Gail. Hiya. Hello. <laughs> hello, Gail. Gail. Uh, what's your question? Right, it's for Yvette. I wanted to know, if you get scared tonight, Yvette, will you be brave enough to go off on your own, or will you have to take someone with you? What do you have to say that for, Gail, live on telly? <laughs> what did you have to say that for? Hmm? 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 Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't say it, because this lot's going to hold me to it, aren't you, if I said it? Yeah. Uh, I would probably try and go off on my own. Ooh. Right. <laughs> Come on, on her own. Done. Yeah, I think I'll take Carl with me first, though. Uh, How about that? Yeah, I think you've kind of blocked yourself in on that one. Yeah. I mean, okay. Gail, would you like to go off on your own if you were on an investigation? Yeah, I'd love it. Really? No, you, you wouldn't love. Yeah. Not here. <laughs> Let me tell you, you wouldn't. Brave soul. <laughs> and Gail, on your own tonight or with friends or what? With my family, with my boys. Right, well, have a good night tonight and thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Gail in Lancashire. Thank you, Bye. Now, look, you two, you've got to go and prepare. A little bit later on. Thanks for coming on the show tonight, and we'll see you a bit later on. See you later on in the hotel for a drink afterwards, Julian. And more tapping. It was really, honestly, it we was really strange. We had wine tapping tapping on the floor and chips. And chips. Fabulous. It, brilliant. <laughs> uh, Yvette Fielding, Carl Beatty. <laughs> Thank you. Now, uh, as ever, Most Haunted Live is all about you at home and we want you to get interactive with the show. We couldn't do the show without you. You're our eyes and ears, you look at the webcams, you send your messages. Brilliant. We want more of that tonight, please. If you're having a Most Haunted Live party, we want to hear all about that as well. We love to hear those kind of stories, strange happenings at home, things happen to your pets, all that kind of stuff. Uh, here are the numbers, the all-important text number. Text the number 80889, leave a space, and then your message. The text costs 50p plus one standard rate message. And, of course, details on our website, mosthauntedlive.net, which is where you'll find the webcams and the interactive map, and you can send messages through that as well. So get in touch, and we'll read out some messages later on in the show. Now, our competition, fabulous prize this time round for Most Haunted Live, running right the way through, in fact, till uh, the end of next week. Uh, the prize is a night of ghost hunting for two, uh, courtesy of Virgin Experience Days, including uh, ghost hunting vigils, psychic experiments, and a seance. We're going to throw in standard class return rail fare from where you are to your chosen ghost hunting experience location. You must take that by the end of next March, including, excluding bank holidays. You must be over 18 as well to enter the competition, and we'll throw in bed and breakfast accommodation for two. Also thrown in uh, priority seating for the next Most Haunted Live uh, in the UK, so we look forward to seeing you for that. And you walk off with the Most, Most Haunted Series 10 on DVD as well. And 10 runners-up walk off with the new Most Haunted Series 10 on DVD, which is out next week, by the way, and we'll throw in priority seating for the next Most Haunted Live in the UK. No rail travel, though, included in that part of it. So let's get to the, co the competition question. What was the title of our last Most Haunted Live transmitted in August? Was it A, Total Darkness, B, Complete Blackness, or C, Turn Off the Lights? If you think you know the answer, you can enter by going to the website, Most Haunted Live. Net. Now, once this Most Haunted Live ends on Halloween, you can still enter the competition for another week by going to livingtv.co.uk slash competitions, and then the competition actually closes at midnight on November the 7th. Please remember to leave your name, because we want to get back to you if you win, and the winners will be selected at random and informed later that week, and you'll be able to see a list of the winners on the Living website. So good luck with that. Now, uh, joining me... Uh, on the show tonight. Also, we've met Stuart, who's our uh, head of interactive, and we've got some new team members with us.
this time round for Halloween, and it's a big hello. Give her a big warm welcome, please, ladies and gentlemen, to Kirsty. <laughs> Lovely to see you too. Yeah, it's uh, cold. It is cold, isn't it? My goodness. The, it was really busy again last night, wasn't it? Incredibly busy. I mean, we were inundated um, with messages, with text messages, um, sightings that people have seen. A lot of the sightings that were seen were on the same webcams at the same time, which was the scariest thing, yeah. I think. We like that, don't we? Because if you get the time when you see something, yeah, then we can tie yeah. it all together, can't we? And also when the messages are coming through, especially the text messages, um, you know, quite often you'll get five at the same time and they'll be very similar. Right. Um, animals or shadows. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, what are we looking for tonight? Uh, and looking for sightings again, we've got all the webcams which are going to be live. There's four webcams in the different areas. Um, and we've also, obviously, when the vets and the team are going around, we want people to message in if they see anything yes, exactly. or if they feel anything, maybe, yeah. you know, at home. Kirsty, I'll let you get back to all the computer Thank screens very much, and the webcams. Steve. Thank you very much indeed. Kirsty from Interactive! Thank you. Thank you. Now, time for us to take a break. We will be back very shortly. More from behind the scenes, more fascinating films to come as well as Most Haunted Live Halloween continues, The Village of the Damned. See you shortly. Well, as manager of the paranormal team, um, I'm here as a bit of a, in a, a guiding role. So I will instigate which rooms we'll go into um, and which methods of investigation we'll use. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, coming to you from this abandoned asylum in Wales. And with us at the location, we have a studio audience who have brought some amazing pumpkins. We'll meet them shortly. This is an extraordinary location, 130 acres. All the buildings in a dilapidated state, open to the elements, and we reckon the scariest, most haunted live location yet. Perfect for our Halloween special. Yeah, good to see you. Now, uh, pumpkins. We've asked the audience members to bring pumpkins with them because one of the people who brings a pumpkin with them to the audience will be going out on the vigil later on tonight. So let's go and meet a couple of members of the studio audience right now. Now, I've been very impressed. I think, actually, the pumpkin carvers have upped their game uh, tonight. First up, it's Sally. Hello, Sally. Hello. I was just saying, is that a DIY pumpkin? Has he been to a DIY store? Or? Well, actually, I thought since we were in an asylum, yeah. you know, it's the mechanics of the oh, mind. Okay. Right. So oh, okay. Well, that's clever. Mm. That's very good. So I actually named him Mike and the Mechanics. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, so Mike and the Mechanic Pumpkin, and if you get chosen to go on the vigil, I mean, are you looking forward to that? Everyone on the previous nights has said, oh yes, I can't wait to go, what about you? Um, bit nervy, but yeah. should be a good experience. Okay, good, and are you a big fan? Very. Right, is this your first live? First live. Right, and mm. you've come to a really good location, because this very room is said to be haunted. So if you feel anything late in the evening, let me know, all right? I will. Okay. So nice pumpkin, Sally, thank you. Angie, what can I say? Hello, Angie. Hi. Where are you from? Reading. Reading. I love your pumpkin. Tell me a bit more about it. Um, this is Bethan. <laughs> She's from uh, Mid Wales, from Lanyard Lloyd's. She was the witch in uh, Lanyard Lloyd's. Right. That took a... What's going on there with the gold and all that? That's rather nice, um, That was just to sort of make it look really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. How do you feel about going out on the vigil of um, your chosen? Terrified, but really excited. Really? Yeah. So, but mixed feelings oh, about it. Oh, really wicked. Right. And are you here on your own or with family and friends? No, I'm with a friend. Right. Well, look, uh, good luck. It could be you. It could be you as well. Mm. Give them a round of applause, Sally and Angie! <laughs> Uh, quick message, Rachel watching in Hull with her mum says, I'm loving the show so far, it's my mum's first Most Haunted live, good luck to the team, lots of those kind of messages coming in, keep them coming, this is how you get in touch, you can text me, text uh, 80889 and then a space, then your message, don't forget to say where, where you are and who you are when you get in touch, and of course those cost 50p plus a standard rate message, and go to the website mosthauntedlive.net to send your messages and to look at the webcams and the interactive map as well, more messages to come a little bit later on in the show. Now, Halloween not far away on Friday, and we thought we'd go to one of the most spookiest, scariest castles in Wales for our next film, Bottle Witham Castle. Look at this. My name's Laura, I'm Visitor Services Manager here at Bottle Witham Castle, and I also manage the paranormal team. 
Most Haunted visited us here in 2004 and after it went out on the telly we did get a lot of response from paranormal groups and uh, Most Haunted viewers who just really wanted to come here and investigate the castle that they'd seen on the TV. Well, as manager of the paranormal team, um, I'm here as a bit of a, in a, a guiding role, so I will instigate which rooms we'll go into um, and which methods of investigation we'll use. I am really looking forward to tonight. It should be a really, really good night of investigation. I'm always looking for as much activity as possible, but if we can get some table tipping, that would be really good. Well, now we're in the sculpture gallery, so what our team's doing now are setting up our crystal protection exercise. So we've got um, the light box and the large crystal, which we'll use for visualisation. We're about to switch the lights off now, and we're going into darkness for the night, so that's the most exciting part for us, getting ready to do the investigation in the dark. Did somebody flash a light down in the corner? Just, oh, it wasn't a light, but it was some sort Which of moon. The same Behind corner, you. opposite us. Well, we're about halfway through the night now. We're having a quick break because it's been a long night so far. We started off in the library um, and we heard a lot of noises in there. Then we went down to the cellar. We were very impressed with there. We have our, our usual figure of the, the cellar man, or Sir, as we now have to call him. He never fails to deliver. And again, tonight we've had some really good activity with the glass from him. So we're really, really pleased with how it's going so far. And we're going to go off to the toy room next. Tonight was a bit of a practice for Halloween, for our Halloween special investigation. We had some really impressive glass divination in several rooms and the table tipping that we got was absolutely fantastic. This is a taster of what we're going to get on Halloween, then it can only be a really good night. So we've got castles, we've got pumpkins, it's feeling very much like Halloween. Just to mention, by the way, if you're coming to see the show for the rest of the week, bring your pumpkins with you, because everyone who brings a pumpkin along could be within a chance on going on the vigil. So bring the pumpkins, they're looking great. Now, let's meet uh, two of my big friends on the show, the man who takes us through the main investigation every night, uh, Paul Ross, and of course our hyster historian, historian, uh, <laughs> Leslie Smith, here they are! <laughs> There's this your new title, Hysteria. Yeah, I like it yeah, it's more good. accurate, isn't it? Paul, good evening. Great to see you. Hello, Julian. And also, when you bring your pumpkins, folks, to the show, bring your thermals. It's freezing it, in here. It yeah. really is. It really is. Now, as ever, Leslie, you're dressed in something fantastic. Tell us a bit about tonight's Subtle, outfit. isn't it? It is. Subtle. <laughs> it's, um, it is pretty cold in here, actually. But yeah. the coat's very relevant, because the coat I'm wearing is dated um, in... Dis <laughs> it's not cold where I'm <laughs> <laughs> Grateful for any attention. Um, the coat I'm wearing is from, uh, will you stop it, is dated from um, about 1616 in design. And I'm wearing it not only because it's warm, but also because this is the time when the witch hunts really got cracking. And so consequently, what I'm wearing at the outside coat bit uh, is the way that people would have dressed, not the middle bit, obviously, uh, would have been dressed there. So it, it's accurate, very, very accurate, and it's lined with steel. So they had witch hunts in Primark. <laughs> <laughs> Later. I'll get him later. <laughs> Uh, a quick thought from you, Paul, on last night. What do you think? It was amazing last night, particularly, and Carl mentioned, Yvette mentioned it, that moment when Brian Shepard, our medium clairvoyant, was pulled off his feet. Yes. yes. There's no way you can throw yourself back and good, thank goodness Stuart was there to save him. It was remarkable. Right. Well, look, stay there, you two, because we've got another film coming up. And this is interesting, this one, because it's about a man who takes Halloween very seriously. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin Carlyon. Uh, I'm the High Priest of British White Witches. A White Witch involves, well, to put it this way, I'm a goodie. You know, I'm not one of these um, evil Satanist sorts. I get involved in doing spells for people, range from love, luck, um, job prospects, uh, healing, fertility. In fact, you name it, I get involved in it. Now, it shows in here that you're a collector. I'm kind of on call, I get people who phone me up who are suicidal, so it, sometimes I end up acting like a social worker as well. Um, but I'm tax registered and the tax office have a little quite ch chuckle, you know, uh, self-employed white witch. Must sound quite strange to them. Somewhere be done! With, with Dr. Fluff, um, she's one of our nine cats. Um, but she seems very special because she has um, some sort of healing gift. 
when we first got her, well, when she was a little kitten, if you had a headache, she'd jump on the bed and um, curl herself around your head. Stomach ache, she'd sit on your stomach. Something wrong with your leg, she'd sit on your leg and all that sort of thing. Um, and it's gone on from there. So the standing joke between myself and my wife was, have you got any ailments for Dr. Fluff today? Come on in, Dr. Fluff. Come now. What I'm into, a little bit like in Star Wars, there's a good side of the force and a dark side of the force. So you do get witches that um, will practice um, for evil purposes, for greed and all that sort of thing. Yeah, there are, there are certain parts of the country that do attract um, darker sides of things. Uh, particularly um, some places in Wales, I know for a fact that there are um, satanic columns there who have in the past preyed on animals. People now um, see witches as, as part of the norm. They don't see them as um, weirdos, like they dropped out of some sort of horror film or something. But really, witchcraft for me is 365 days a year, not just on Halloween. Uh, I love it. So uh, there we are. Uh, uh, probably a first for British television there, Dr. Fluff, the mystic pussy, and all the other cats, <laughs> all the other cats on the bed there, and a behave audience, please. Um, quick reaction from my guests on that one, Leslie Smith. Oh, thanks. Um, I, was just, I was just feeling um, what a very challenging thing it is for people to be accepted broadly, yeah. um, who deal with um, witchcraft and this sort of thing. It's absolutely fascinating, really, how people live, isn't it? Yeah. All those pussies on that bed are about a nine there, weren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Paul, I have nothing to say. <laughs> I, you know, the bit that impressed me most was the, the was it Ozzy Osbourne who signed that picture there? I think it was. Yes, yes, yes he Paul's, fitted in well. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's meditating, by the way, at this point, I think. Well, look, thank you very much indeed to everyone who's got involved in making our films the most haunted life. Do you want to stay there, you two? Yes, please. <laughs> right, good, good. Uh, we should come back very shortly. There's more from Most Haunted Life. Halloween on the way. See you in a minute. <laughs> The history of magic in North Wales can be traced back to the original pagan religions of the British Isles. We know, for example, that ancient Celtic religion was guided by a priestly magician caste known as Druids. Gauls from the continent are said to have travelled to Britain for initiation into the mysteries. The knowledge was passed on only by word of mouth. Happy Halloween from Bottlewood and Castle. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, live in North Wales until Halloween. And we are in an abandoned asylum built in the early 1800s. And it is a completely dilapidated site here. Uh, in fact, you can hear the rain behind me coming through the ceiling because most of the buildings and rooms in this site are open to the elements. So it's quite an extraordinary location for our Most Haunted Live Halloween special. Now. Between now and Friday, lots more films, lots more investigations coming up from nine every night with the investigation team. And still with me on the stage here, Paul Ross and Leslie Smith. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. So, some thoughts about tonight, Paul. What do you think, uh, what, what are we looking forward to this evening? What is fascinating tonight is what Most Haunted does best is <clears throat> modern science meets psychic ability. So it's a huge electrical experiment, and it's raining, and we've got yeah. Brian Shepherd. It's going to be belting tonight. Yeah. Leslie, what do you think? I think it's going to be belting in every sense of the word, <laughs> really. Um, it is going to be extraordinary, absolutely right. And because we know what's coming. I mean, I've got an idea what's coming, um, but I think the impact... Uh, both on the team, literally, and the audience will be quite something. The thing that struck me, Paul, is when they said we were coming to one location for Halloween for seven nights, I thought, well, that, that, there won't be enough to yeah. do. But it's such a big location. That, well, I it's mean... set in something like, what, 130, 140 yeah. acres, yes, so many yes. outbuildings, so much history, and it's such a part of the community. And, of course, this area, I mean, six miles down the road, there's a legend that Arthur 
beheaded a love rival at six Anyone? miles down the road. Exactly. Public execu executions in the 16th century in the main square. That's right. So it's like coming to, uh, to a town, basically, or a small village yeah. to well, do this, well, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. And yeah. that's the sensation of it. And in the audience again tonight, we've got another load of nurses here who trained here and worked with the people in the community and moved on to other hospitals. So right. the people here with nostalgia as well. And that's there's all that great sense. But I think the experiment tonight, well, that's stand by people at home. It's going to be incredible. That's lovely. Now, the people in the audience, where are the nurses in the audience? Here? Are they, is it, yeah. the, the, they are quick way, can we find well them? That's well brilliant. Give them a round of applause. Well done, well done. my lovelies. Really nice. And that's what it's all about. So we were seeing on the show last night, the people who worked here made a real difference for, for mental health and so yes, on. Yes, they did. Now, uh, questions from people at home, questions in the audience for you too. So let's go to the phones. Craig is in Stockport. Hi, Craig. Hello, how, how are you? I'm really well, actually. And are you looking forward to the show tonight? Absolutely, sitting here in the nice, warm, centrally heated house. Ready to... Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Craig. Yes, I really wanted to hear that. What's your question? Uh, hi, Lisa and Paul. My question to you is, what do you miss most when working away from home on location, doing Most Haunted Live? Uh, well, I'm Good lucky on. this time around because my wife, two of my children, and my great big dog, Gracie, have come with me. Normally, it would be the family. And also, I do miss this, the chance of watching it at home. Before I worked on it, I always watched it, so I have to watch it on tape, and it's never quite the same. Right. Leslie, what about you? What do you miss about being at home? Um, my little boy. Uh, uh, but he did ring earlier and he had found my leg waxing kit and stuck it all over him. Um, <laughs> so, I'm sorry darling if you're watching, this is true. Um, so that was a bit of fun. Yes, I do miss him of course. The worrying thing is he's 27. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Nazi worth expecting there, Craig. Uh, Craig, th thanks for your call. Uh, let's go out to the audience now and meet one of the audience members who wants to ask a question and it's Lisa from Dudley, who's right back oh, here Dudley. behind our pumpkin oh, carvers. Hello, Lisa. pumpkin carvers. Lisa, hello. Hello. No, I'm really well. Now, what's your question? Um, what's the scariest movie or TV programme you've ever watched? Good one. Paul. Oh, I used to absolutely love The Salem's Lot, the first version with David Soul. That was fantastic. Films like The Shining and Psycho are brilliant. I think one of the scariest films I've ever seen is one of the strangest. You can buy it very cheaply. It's called Carnival of Souls in black and white, oh, made in yes. the early 60s. And it's such a weird, it's creepy, fantastic. trippy film. You can even pick it up in a pound shop or a pound stretcher for under a pound. It's an amazing film, Carnival of Souls. Oh, yes. right there. It's also scary, isn't it? What about you, Leslie? Uh, the others. Because I was watching it for an hour before I realised what it was, and it fried the hell out of me. Um, absolutely. I was watching it, and I thought, isn't this strange? And uh, so I spent uh, quite a few nights in therapy after that, because and I didn't know what it was. And as we all know, Les is always up for a bit of the others. Yeah. Um, God, he's about... in for it tonight, I can tell you. And what about you? It's got to be most haunted Pendle Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's a good answer as well. Great, the best good answer, answer, actually. Well, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much for coming tonight, and uh, enjoy the show. Give her a round of applause. Wonderful, thank you. Now, uh, we haven't had a film yet from Leslie on the show so far on our Seven Night Specials. I think it's high time we did, and here is Leslie with a film about witches. Halloween often conjures up images of ghosts, ghouls and witches. The history of magic in North Wales can be traced back to the original pagan religions of the British Isles. We know, for example, that ancient Celtic religion was guided by a priestly magician caste known as Druids. Gauls on the continent are said to have travelled to Britain for initiation into the mysteries. The knowledge was passed on only by word of mouth, and none of it survives. What is certain is that the ancient Celts practised human sacrifice. Caesar describes the burning of victims inside giant wicker effigies. Archaeology can prove that the Celtic people of Britain did practice ritual human sacrifice in parts of Britain, in and around North Wales. Witch trials swept through Europe during the 15th, 16th and 17th centuries and result in the deaths of perhaps as many as a hundred thousand people, mostly women, across Europe. Belief in magic was strong. It has been suggested that Wales was far more tolerant than other parts of Europe and provided a haven for traditional practices and folk customs that did not survive elsewhere. These individuals exercised spirits, lifted curses and provided healing potions. Some have even suggested that they were the inheritors of druidical wisdom. Will the investigation team come across 
the spirits of some of these witches tonight. We shall have to wait and see. Hello. I'm, I'm all scared now, having seen that. But, I mean, it, I, I didn't really realise all of that. I mean, it's a, it's a scary part of the world, isn't it? It's a very scary part because they were really left alone. I've mm. only got four trials of which one escaped and they were dragged into Chester, three executed, people were left alone. But the Druids, the human sacrifice related to that is mind-blowing. With a great wicker man burning people, that's really in Gaul. But the Gaul people trained in North Wales, so they may well have learned about it here. That terrifying image of people stuffed in this huge figure and set on fire. Really happened, folks. Really happened. Okay. Paul, maybe, oh, you're right. I was a bit carried away then, Just sorry. Just you're right. <laughs> well, I mean, coming back to Dr. Fluff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we should get Dr. Fluff on the show, by the way. Yes, Just yes. like I mentioned it. Um, so, Paul, um, we've got more nights to come, obviously, and as we said, no problem about different locations. This is unusual, though, because we are in the same place as the investigation. We've investigations with the Ouija board session yeah. right in the heart of this great room, this auditorium, and we've learned an awful lot of phenomena in this room. We've heard from people after every show that they've heard strange sounds, they've had visions, they've seen things. So, again, we really want people's input tonight. And, of yeah. course, for people at home, always g g get in touch via interactive. Yeah. And hi history for you, Leslie, I mean, it's, it's a journey every night, isn't it? It, it's it's mind-blowing, actually, because yeah. I've got loads of stuff, probably only used 20 or 30% of it, but I've got to move very fast. I have no idea what's going to come. And I've, you'll, people in the audience will see me working like the clappers to try to work this through. I've got Fred, of course, who will help me on some of the mystic Brilliant. side. Good, good. Well, look, we'll, we'll see you all a bit later. Paul, you'll be taking charge at 9 o'clock for the investigation tonight. Looking good forward enough. to that. Leslie, I'll let you get into your nice new leather chairs. My goodness, oh, can't wait. This evening. Uh, for the moment, give them a big round of applause. Leslie Smith and Paul Ross! <laughs> Now, time for us to take another break. We'll be back very shortly. Lots more to come on Most Haunted Live in North Wales, Village of the Damned. See you in a minute. My initial feeling here is probably, apart from anything else, and there seems to be quite a lot of a residual uh, um, activity and energy down here, but um, foremost, probably are three figures. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diane from Preston, and my two daughters helped me make my pumpkin. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, Halloween 2008, and we are in North Wales in an abandoned mental asylum built in the early 1800s, based on 130 acres of run-down and dilapidated buildings. Many of the buildings open to the elements. In fact, the hall we're in tonight has rain coming in in the corner of the room, just to put that in perspective. A perfect location for our Most Haunted Live special. And the investigation now is just minutes away, starting here on Living at 9 o'clock. So make sure you keep it right there for the rest of the evening. Believe me, it's going to be a scary night. Now, already you're getting interactive. Thank you for all your messages coming in thick and fast uh, on the text and on the website as well. It's uh, sent out to a few people. Uh, Kylie and Sophie in Lincoln have watched nearly every Most Haunted live show, and this is no exception. And I think uh, this uh, last three nights have been fantastic. Good luck to the team for the rest of the week, they say. Georgia and Kirsty in Margate are wishing the team good luck tonight. They get uh, very spooky feelings about this evening's show, and they think the names Veronica and Suzanne will appear in tonight's investigation. Hope in Whitchurch says hi, good luck to the team. I'm loving the show, it's been very spooky so far. Can't wait to see what happens uh, tonight. Thank you for that one, Hope. And Lauren and Pat in Manchester think that this is the most fantastic location ever. I agree with you, Lauren and Pat, it is. And they ask the team to be careful as they feel a strong spirit is close by. We will find out within minutes. And Kieran in Birmingham is having a most haunted live party tonight and says, don't get too scared. And Emma in Doncaster says, thanks for a great show. And one more for the moment. Lizzie in Banbury has written to say the last two nights have been fantastic. She can't wait to see what happens over the next few nights. Fab show and good luck to everyone. Don't forget, I'll tell you in a few minutes' time how you can get in touch. Look at the website, uh, look at the webcams and our interactive map as well. So keep your messages coming, your strange events at home, your most haunted live parties, all that kind of thing to come. Now, Brian Shepard, our psychic artist and medium, has been making a series of films for this most haunted live special. Every night he previews the location we're going to visit. Here is film number three. <laughs>
area that we're in is a war, of course. So, so I mean, obviously the the dormitory, then the beds would have been here for the patients. You know, from from my point of view, at the moment I'm just feeling that you know the activity between just between the two areas here under this arch. My initial feeling here is probably apart from anything else, and there seems to be quite a lot of a residual uh, um, activity and energy down here, but um, foremost probably are three figures. Two um, walking from the, what we're going to call it a day room, day room back into the dormitory stroke ward area, and another figure, partially obscured from me anyway, behind or, or thereabouts the second pillar from me right now. They're the, they're the prominent feelings. And more of Brian's extraordinary psychic art to come later on in the show. I leave you for the moment with a thought from Gemma, Allen and Sophie in Coventry. They're looking at the show right now, having a party in fact, and they reckon the name Elizabeth is going to come up tonight. But is it? Let's find out. It's time to get tonight's investigation underway and hand over to Paul Ross. Thank you, Julian. Thank you. Thank you. Well, our unprecedented and incredibly ambitious seven-night investigation into this form of mental asylum in North Wales is about to continue. Yvette Fielding and the team are taking on the village of the damned. Tonight, the shock. As we build to midnight on October the 31st, Halloween itself. But before we reacquaint ourselves with the vet and the team, let's take a look at how we've come to where we are and what might be in store for us tonight. A forlorn and abandoned insane asylum in Wales provides the setting for an extra special seven nights of Halloween Most Haunted Live. This sprawling estate with its own farm, chapel, blacksmith, carpenters, in fact everything it might need to keep it in isolation, was envisaged as a place to shut away the feeble-minded, the seriously deranged and the criminally insane from the rational world. Its community becoming, in the thoughts of many, a village of the damned, where poor unfortunate beings were hidden away from their deluded thoughts. But it is allegedly a place where all manner of strange and inexplicable events occurred. Footprints leading to bricked up doors, eerie shrieks and cries from empty corridors and stairways, the sounds of invisible doors crashing shut, sinister sightings of dark shadowy figures and even tales of witches and demons. Just the unhinged imaginings of the demented or genuine visualizations of another world beyond ours? The Most Haunted team intend to find out. Well, joining us now in this truly terrifying location, led by Vet Fielding, our investigations team, ladies and gentlemen. Carl Beachy, Brian Shepherd, and Dr. Kieran O'Keefe. And Yvette, an amazing two nights so far, and I think a truly terrifying night in Prospect. How are you feeling tonight? Um, I'm very excited because we're actually doing a, a new experiment that Carl and I have have thought about um, and um, it takes place in in one room I'm not going to spoil the surprise but it, it's got something to do with electricity and it's it's the first so it's and there's good. a clue in the subheading of tonight's show the shock yes you could be in for a real shock tonight because it's so. hammering down with rain out there yeah you can hear it can't you coming through the studio also we had a shot looking back at the footage from last night's show obviously the cameras keep rolling during breaks and we spotted something really unusual I don't think you've seen this yet no? Let's take a look at something that occurred last night that we didn't notice at the time that I think is remarkable. Let's take a look. There you go. Can you see that? Yeah. Blow the candles out. Chris, can you see that? That's it's very clear now. That's very clear now. Now that's happen, something caught cool there on Kieran yeah. and Thermal Imager. Yeah. Look at that face. What? We've got a, we've got oh. a black source. cat kind of in the corner. Oh, yeah, there. yeah. It looks like it's on the windowsill. Of course, no actual cat was there. Now, we had an awful lot of input from our viewers about this. They wrote in, they texted in. They thought they'd seen quite clearly, and you can see it there, the outline of a black cat, a well-known familiar, of course, 
to witches. Hey, did you spot that at the time? No, I, I, not at all. I mean, obviously, I'd have to look at it again and yeah. again and again, and maybe probably come up with a logical explanation. Um, to me, it could just be gaps under the window, and it's it's. No, there's a gap under the window, yeah. but there's something in front of the window. Clearly, something in front of the window, and, and it is the shape of a cat. I mean, but it could be a hole in the in the in the in the glass. That's what I mean. In, in no, there wasn't. There, there actually yeah. wasn't. I know no, that. I know that window pane. Oh, there wasn't. We checked the window pane. There was no hole yeah. in the glass. There. What we oh. need to look at again and see from Kieran is whether there was some little draft or something yeah. in at the moment. I've done it, but it's fascinating stuff. It is stuff. fascinating, definitely. Okay, how are you coping, Carl? Very well. I can't wait for tonight because of the experiment tonight. I think um, uh, I think it's going to be a very exciting night. I thought last night was brilliant. I was a little bit disappointed that the witches failed us and you know uh, and didn't show up as much as we hoped they would be. But we've got we've, we've still got another five nights. Well, we've also got some more information on that because during the Ouija board session, the number fifty-one kept occurring. Mm. Yeah. And Fred Bat, our demonologist and black art specialist, has got some exciting information about that coming up in about five minutes' time. Okay. So let's turn out to Brian Shepherd. Brian, you spent time in this building mm. over the next seven nights. We're seeing in the different locations yeah. what's come to you via your psychic art gift. Can sure. you talk us about talk us through tonight's image? What did you sense in the area you're going to tonight, which I think what? is in the southwest wing of this building? Yeah, okay, you, you're, seeing, you're seeing it there. I strongly felt, um, well, you can see, see the image, I strongly felt that, you, you know, I picked up on a distinct person. And although at that time I couldn't make too much sense of it, um, I'm, putting, I'm putting a lot together, stringing a lot together now. There's a thread running through this. And tonight, it's going to be quite interesting, I think, as we well, for me anyway, revisit this scene. There's another person. Yeah, just no, that's it. absolutely right. right. I and think I that think is most can... disturbing, yeah. the images you've yeah. come up with so but far. But I think I can start to make sense of what's going on. Okay, well, when we're back in the location, we'll hear from you on that. Finally, Kieran. Okay, now we've hinted it involves electricity. We know it's been concocted in part by a vet and Carl, and you've monitored it. What the dickens are we in for tonight? Well, I don't know if I can actually talk exactly I about the experiment. I can't wait to find out. But it <laughs> focuses around a particular character called Tesla, who has a lot of links to spiritualism and uh, a lot of that research in the early and late 1800s even. Um, links to uh, spirit communication. He was involved in early radio designs and that sort of thing. But at the end of the day, I don't know if we can tell exactly what's no, going on no. with the experiment. No. Frank's box, Mitchell. Well, I'll be using Frank's box tonight. Okay, which of course is one of those amazing things. Yeah. It picks up almost radio white TV noise. first in the UK. You are in for a rare treat tonight, a TV first. Amazing bravery and an incredible investigation. They're off now. Yvette Fooding and the team, let's get Thank things you. underway. Yvette and the team, everybody. <laughs> and work their way through this astonishing, crumbling building, a monument to Victorian Gothic architecture. Sadly now dilapidated, but very scary, very threatening, and some of the sounds you hear tonight may well be the torrential rain pouring through the shattered roof of this building. Now, putting flesh on the bones of Brian Shepherd's psychic intuitions, we have, of course, as ever, our esteemed academic and historian, Leslie Smith, and demonologist and black art specialist, Fred Batt. Wow. So, Leslie, tonight it's science meets intuition meets paranormal ability. Are you looking forward to it? Hugely, because so often those boundaries became muddled and one turned into another. So that's going to be thrilling, yes. Okay, now, Fred, last night we had, through the Ouija boards, we had an awful lot of uh, recurrence of the number 51. That's right. At the time, yeah. we couldn't really source it. We thought there were six witches in the room. Yeah. 51, 5 plus 1 equals 6. Have you got any more for us tonight? Well, there's something else I didn't think of. Um, in the 16th century, um, psalms were used for rituals and magic. And Psalm 51 was often used for forgiveness uh, for people's sins. So this could have been a plea for help to a vet from some poor witch's soul for help to forgive her sins. Because you had identified, both of you, a particularly gruesome witch or gruesome legends That's around right. the witch That's involving right. cannibalism right. yeah. and eating children. Right. There was a witch in the area, uh, Carrig, her name was, and she used to eat children apparently. So, could be that perhaps. Okay, thank you both very much for the time being. Leslie Smith and Fred Batt, ladies and gentlemen. But of course, you are our eyes and ears. You spotted that black cat image on the heat sensor of Kieran's, and we need your input tonight. Here is the conduit for that input and a whole lot more. My old mate on the show, Julian Clegg.
Thank you, Paul, and thank you for getting interactive already. Lots of messages coming up, which is brilliant. And let me tell you how you can get in touch and get involved. First up, though, the all-important interactive map. This is on our website, mosthauntedlive.net. Let's have a look at it right now. And it really does show how big a site we are at. So here we are, first night. You can see flashing up there. That's where we were on the first night. Then last night, right over there on the left there on the investigation. And tonight, uh, we're in the southwest wing of the asylum, the old treatment wards. Now, let's go through where the webcams are tonight. In the main ward there, flashing up right now on the map. Our second webcam tonight is in the ward, and you can see that flashing there. The third webcam is in the stairwell, and then the fourth webcam tonight in the southwest wing is in the corridor on the ground floor. So I need you to be looking at those webcams so that you see anything unusual, uh, any orbs or any, uh, anything else going on, let me know. Let's go through the webcams and have a look at them right now. First up, webcam one, as I say, located in the main ward on the ground floor. We can see it there. Don't forget to say what time you see anything. That's jolly useful when we're looking at this and, of course, to say where you are and where you're from so we can mention you on the air. Let's move on to webcam two on the second floor, bringing that one up there. And you can see the pillars there uh, in that particular location. So keep me posted on what you can see during the evening on that one. Moving on to webcam three, the stairwell that links the various floors in the building. What are you going to see on that webcam tonight, I wonder? I'd like to hear from you, please. Do you see anything on the website? Let me know. And then moving on to webcam four in the ground floor corridor. There it is. And I think you can hear, I think it's rain here. Yeah, once again, rain coming through the roof. And the investigation team is setting up there as well. That is webcam four, the ground floor corridor. So, what's going to be seen on those webcams tonight, I wonder? Well, how can you get in touch? You can text me, text the word screen, then a space to 80889. The text costs 50p plus one standard rate message, and of course, say who you are and where you're from. And of course, the website where the webcams and the interactive map is, and you can send messages to the website as well, mosthauntedlive.com. Net. That's how to get in touch. Keep all that coming, please. Now, on to our fantastic competition. One lucky winner selected at random from all the correct entries is going to receive a night of ghost hunting for two, courtesy of Virgin Experience Days. This includes a ghost hunting vigil, psychic experiments, and a seance. Uh, we're going to add in standard class return rail fare from where you live to your location, your chosen location for your ghost hunting uh, vigil. We're also going to throw in first class bed and breakfast accommodation for two. And this part of the prize can be taken up until the end of next March, excluding bank holidays. You must be over 18 to enter this competition, by the way, very importantly. And also you're going to receive a pair of tickets for the next Most Haunted Live, priority seating uh, for that. And you're going to walk off with the new Most Haunted Series 10. There it is on DVD, which comes out next week. So we throw all that in for the prizes. And 10 runners up walking off with that uh, new DVD and priority seating for the next UK Most Haunted Live as well. No return rail fare included in that part of the prize, by the way. So let's have the question if you'd like to win. Great prize and we'd love to see it at the next uh, UK event. Uh, what was the title of our last Most Haunted Live transmitted in August? Was it A, Total Darkness, B, Complete Blackness, or C, Turn Off the Lights? And you can enter by visiting mosthauntedlive.net. And once this Most Haunted Live ends on Halloween, you can still enter the competition for a whole week by going to livingtv.co.uk slash competitions. And the competition will close at midnight on Nova, November the 7th. And remember to leave your name so we can get in touch in case you win. And the winners will be selected at random and informed later that week. And you'll be able to see a list of all the winners on the Living website as well. So good luck with that. We look forward to seeing you and a lot more to come. Uh, from the interactive team through the evening. So keep the messages coming for the moment. Paul, back to you. Thank you, Julian. Most Haunted Live. Our amazing journey to midnight on Halloween continues. Seven nights of fright. And we are absolutely live from a form of mental asylum in North Wales. Once home to the delusional, the damaged and the deranged. We'll find out who's here now after this. Hello and welcome back to Most Haunted Live. We have based ourselves here in this remarkable location, a former asylum in North Wales. It is a terrible night, dark, stormy, rain and wind swept. A promising night, you might think, for a paranormal investigation, but a paranormal investigation with a twist. Tonight, 20th century technology meets the ancient divinations and intuitions of our clairvoyant medium, Brian Shepherd. 
tonight's experiment is going to be remarkable in the extreme. Let's take a look at what might be in store for us tonight in the shock. Are spirits of witches really alive within the confines of this gothic creation? Eerie noises are said to be heard within these wards and corridors. Is it just the wind playing strange atonal music through the broken windows and sagging floors, or truly the lingering energy of some long-forgotten entity still trapped in another time and crying for release? Will a bolt of electricity help us connect with these creatures and shock them from the dark and hidden corners of this forgotten place to give us evidence that something remains of those who once walked here? Fascinating stuff there, and I'm joined again by our guest, clairvoyant medium, Billy Roberts, ladies and gentlemen. Billy, I know you tend not to visit an investigation site until it actually begins, but you can sense things remotely, is that right? Yeah, I yeah, pick quite a bit up, yeah. And have you sensed anything so far this evening? Well, we had, uh, on the first night, we had, um, I had a, a, an elderly lady um, who, whose name was Maggie, I thought, Briar. And um, she was quite annoyed. She, she apparently was a, an inmate here, a patient in the 1800s. But she, was, she introduced me um, to another man, a, a gentleman, who had something to do with the, the land upon which it was built. And when I uh, came to the place earlier on, um, he seemed to be quite annoyed that it had fell into disrepair. And he said his brother actually donated the land upon on which the hospital is built. His name was Edward um, Ab, Ab, Ab something, Ablet. And the, the, the man who actually donated his brother apparently was called Joseph. And he died before the, the building was actually built. And uh, anyway, his spirit seems to be quite prevalent. Seems to be very annoyed what's going on with the, the actual disrepair of the building. And is he annoyed with us, our investigation? Well, she was. The lady is very annoyed with, with the the antics, if you'll excuse the fun, of, of all the, 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 um, the, the palaver uh, that's, you know, about the, the psychic stuff. She finds it very distasteful. Okay, thank you for that, Billy. Okay. More from Billy as the evening unfolds. And of course, a member of our studio audience will be joining the vigil team tonight. So brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. As for the first time this evening, we say good evening to Yvette Fielding on the location tonight, I think in the old southwest wing of this amazing building. Yvette, over to you and good luck to all of you. Thanks. Thanks very much, Paul. We're actually walking um, up the stairs um, towards, well, a, a big open area. You'll soon see uh, what it looks like. I mean, everywhere looks very similar, really, with, with regard to the disrepair and it looking all derelict. There's various rooms. Carl, checking it out? Yep. What's down there? It's what an old... There? Um, sorry. It's quite eerie. It's an, old, it's, it's an old washroom or bathroom or something, but okay. we should look at it, I guess. Yeah? Let's have a quick look. It's nothing at all smoked. Oh, right, these are the loos. What's that noise? Was it an echo? Was it something? No, no. Listen. Stand still. Is that a generator or something outside? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Some, yeah. Kind of off of generator. yeah. So, Brian, I just want you to kind of just check out in your mind, you know, what sort of things are happening. What can you see? What, what I can see. I'm many people at the moment. I can just see, you know, that's how many people. I mean, six, seven people, gather, you know, coming in and out of here. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I suppose latter days, you know, like patients, I suppose, using this area. Um, a lot of noise. Some shouting. I said to you just now, in actual fact, when we were off that, you know, you were calling out and something seemed to echo you, whether yes. that was, you know, in response to what you were actually doing or, or, or you know, part of, who knows, past ward life or something. I mean, I'm not really not sure, but... Carl, Carl? Yeah. Well, where are you? Come on. Uh, it's the same. Uh, you know, when we did off-air, Carl and I do this chant together. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, comes from, um, 
uh, it's words in Hebrew um, basically uh, giving blessing, but it has a resonance um, that's supposed to attract spirits. And some people might have heard us do it before. But anyway, it's supposed to charge the room, charge energy. Um, and Carl and I were doing it, and after we stopped, there was almost like a woman's uh, copying us, really. Yeah, it was almost straight away. It kind of followed on. Yeah. When we finished. But when you guys were downstairs waiting to, yeah. to, to, to actually come on, literally Kath, Stuart, myself, we were all up here, and you could hear people walking around, but you could almost hear the same thing. It was like a... Oh, how strange. Yeah. Can we just, uh, Chris, on camera, can you just pan round the room so we can actually see where we're standing? Um, you can see what it looks like. There's Kath. And there's Stu at the back, Stuart Harrison. Oh, blimey, blimey, Charlie. Um, and this is just a big wide open space, and there's a couple of rooms off here. So, Carl, should we do the uh, little chant and see if, if, if we get the same thing again? Yeah, I've got to. I mean, normally I, it, it's a bit, I don't really like to do it on camera, but we'll give it a go. And listen out, as soon as we've finished or during it, David, where yeah, are you? Um, if we get anything. You ready? Mm hmm. Oh. here with us now if you're a patient here if you were here before this place was built come towards us now make a noise listen that was like a bed moved or something did you not hear that like a scraping it was a scraping sound yeah, like me you know metally like a foot of a bed or something on on the floor i'm hearing it over there though yeah i didn't hear that did you yeah, anybody else a, you know like you would move a, a bed but it's not on this, it's not like it's on this floor. It's like it's on a... Yeah, a hard, a hard surface. Well, so yeah. what, what would this room have been used for then? This looks like a general uh, sort of, w which would have had beds, doesn't it? A ward which would have had um, sort of beds here and, here yeah. and there, look. So it was a ward? Um, yeah, for, like a dormitory sleeping, I would, I would guess. It seems to me that's the vision I'm getting. So, so who's here? Who, was, who do you think's making that whistling noise well, and the no, noise off camera that well, we heard before? I'll tell you something else. Just, just a moment ago, when you heard that little whistling noise, also something that I, I can't understand. Um, I have done... What? what? Huh? Hey, I did. There was somebody whispering. It was a... Sigh, wasn't it? Did you hear it? With respect. Was that not a sigh? It did sound like a sigh. Did you not hear that? No. I heard it, Kath. I did, yeah. You heard it, Stuart, yeah? Yes, yes. Did you hear it, Carl? I heard something, yeah. 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 Keep going. Yeah, yeah. Why? Well, I haven't. I have done nothing. I've done nothing. I've done nothing wrong. Nothing. There was again. Yeah, that was a. That you was did a, hear a, it. A, a, a breath. But that's coming from down there. That is definitely coming. There's no one down there, is it? Would we pick that up? Would is everyone up here? All the crew. I think so. We're all together, Carl. Listen, we're getting a charge of energy around us now. David, would we? Would they be able to hear that at home? If you would, it was very quiet, but it's it was there. Very quiet. It was only Brian's chat. But it's that. It was. <sighs> Yeah. But Dave, I'm just trying to say, when I got that, I have done nothing wrong. It was like, I have done nothing. You know, very breathy. Okay. I have done nothing wrong. And it was a woman. Oh, a woman it? is saying this to me. I have done I don't understand what you're saying. Please, I don't understand. I, I don't understand it, Mama. And there's, there's, a man, there's a man's name mentioned from her. Robert 
right. Okay. What what time period are we talking about here with this this woman? Was she was she was she We're here late or yeah, early? No. It's certainly early. This is very early. I you just heard that again, Kath. Is it her, Brian? Is she the one that's going? <sighs> yeah, no, definitely. And she's trying to speak to me. And and she's mentioning names. Why are you why? Why are you saying this? Robert. Why? The person kneeling down. The picture. Remember the picture we looked yes, at? Yes, yeah, yeah. The man the kneeling down. The person on the ground. Yeah. Has broken. Broken what? Broken <coughs> broken his leg? His arm? Robert, I have done but I have done nothing wrong. There it was again. There it was again. But do you know what? It was more distant. It was. Did, did anybody hear that? We did hear you it. did. Again, very very quiet. Carl, did you hear it? I've and again. Well, I, I was just standing in this room, and I can hear just loads of pictures. Right, oh. now, now, where was that? Fireworks. Oh, fire. Fire. No, fire. Was that fire? Good That's God. not fireworks. Sorry, I think we all... It is fireworks. No, it's not. Is it? No. Well, it's not paranormal, surely. Something slammed. That's a door slamming. Get off! That's like a door slamming. Outside. The, guy, the guys have got a spread. They, they've they sweeped with dogs and everything. The guys are all on it. Oh, where is this? That's gunfire. Can we just check? We need to check. We need to check that everything's fine outside. What is that? Eddie, I'm confused. Are you right out there? No, this is me, Flashbacks. Flashbacks are what, Stuart? What are you talking about? What's going on? What is it, Kieran? Carl? Well, we don't know that the security's outside. And they just said that... They, they've actually heard it outside, right. but they don't know what it is yet. So they're they're, they're going to have a look. Stop. But they it's think a cable, it's cable. Oh. Oh, bloody hell, Robin! They 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 kind of think it's in here, but they're going to have a look around anyway up to the church. They think it's in here. Well, that's what they, that's their, their initial thing. It's, they're over there, and they think it's come from over here. Did you think it sounded like it was in here? I thought it sounded like a door slamming in here. I thought it sounded like it was outside. Me too. The, the second one. To I'll tell. be honest, so did I. Initially, I thought that's outside, it sounded like a firework. Okay, it's a firework. Thought. Yeah. And the kids messing about. One and two. Sure. Why have we not got bang, bang, bang? Yeah, I know, I know. I know. Okay. <sighs> right, so. But there's so, sorry, sorry, so go much on. going on. I mean, there's, there, there's such a charge in this room, let alone be thinking about, you know, yeah. what's going on outside. I was saying to you, something is, you know, someone, a woman, is yes. coming through to me and she's determinedly saying, I have done nothing wrong. What's and you haven't said that. Speak to me then. Make, make it clear to. And Jenny, I had nothing. I should never have got involved with her. Okay. Conway woman, that comment she did for me. Conway. Okay, but what's your name? So she's, she's mentioning someone else, right. another woman, yes. an involvement with another party, someone she should never have got involved with. Did get involved to her detriment, I believe, okay? So why, why did you get involved? She, want, she set you up to do something? Please, speak to me. What is your name? Gwen. Gwen? Gwen. Gwen, yes? Gwen. So what were you? What and when? Fifteen. Fifteen, something. I can hear knocking. Oh, I can hear that behind you, Kieran. Now that is behind you, there's nobody behind you. I'm not sure you. it's behind. It's certainly in this area. Yes. I'm not yeah. sure if it's directly behind me or okay. off Gwen, to the side. Gwen, if this is you, please knock twice. If it's not you, whoever it is, knock twice now. Is anybody walking? No. I just heard two no, I over there. Did you, Carl? I thought I got two knocks in response to what you just said. Did you? But in a different place, down yeah, there. Yeah, you were looking over walking. there, weren't you? Let's just ask I... again. Yeah, you do. Gwen. Gwen, if this is you. 
Graham, if this is you, knock twice if this is you. Yes, and do you know what? David, did you hear that? I did hear it. Ask, ask Gwen. Get, tell her to come closer. Gwen, come close to us and, and explain to me, what are you doing here? Did you live here? So, protestations of innocence from a woman called Gwen. We've also got the name Robert and we're hearing eerie, uncanny whistling. Oh, and some fireworks outside as well. And it's week and a half away from November the 5th. Stay with us. More from Most Haunted Live after this break. Hello and welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the village of the damned. The proceedings tonight have started with a bang. We have a female name, Gwen. We have a protestation of innocence. We have a male name and we have eerie whistling in the area, the southwest wing of this immense building, which was, of course, a former mental asylum here in North Wales. It is an unpromising night weather-wise, but an amazing night as far as paranormal potential goes. And I'm delighted to welcome back Billy Roberts, our guest medium and clairvoyant. Billy, hello again, sir. Hi, Paul. Now, um, Brian was picking up, Brian Shepherd, who's out with the vet and the team, was picking up a feeling of, of somebody saying, I'm innocent. In your experience, and all medium clairvoyants work in different ways, would that come through more as emotion or as words, actual decipherable words? Well, I, in my, the way I work, I'm a clairaudient medium, so it's different for me, but Brian is more, works on more on an intuitive level, so he'd be using what's called clairsentience. Um, he would sense a, a female or, or male, and you can tell an awful, clean an awful lot of information just by sensing. It's an ability that most people do possess, but mediums have developed it to a fine art. And when did you first become aware you had this gift? From the age of three. Um, I've always been mediumistically inclined. I became a professional medium um, in the late 70s. So, but medium, I must say that mediumship is the most unreliable ability. You can't, no medium, it doesn't matter who they are, can call people back. It's, uh, it's purely subjective. And um, we, we, you really can't rely on the five senses. Um, it, it's, it's very unreliable, really. Which is what's fascinating about tonight's experiment. Dr. Kieran O'Keefe, our trained parapsychologist, is out there. We are attempting to marry tonight 20th century technology with that ancient gift of mediumship and clairvoyance. And we can now go back to the vigil. They've relocated to the ground floor. And I think we've gone into night vision. Yvette, back to you. Right. Um, this is very, very exciting. Um, we are sat around a Ouija board table. Um, and then behind us is possibly... I am so excited, is the Tesla machine. Kieran, do you want to explain what yes. we're looking at? It, what's behind us is something called a Tesla coil. It's going to shoot out um, about half a million volts of what will look like lightning, essentially. And uh, Carl and Yvette have set this up in order to charge the room, this theory being that if the charge is there, maybe the spirits will use it. But in addition, let's not forget, the guy that invented this <gasps> was heavily involved in spiritualism, teleportation, was a fantastic inventor, electrical engineer. He invented alternating current, uh, the radio, x-rays, all of this. So there's a real connection with spiritualism and that sort of research that we're doing here. Can I tell you the table is actually shaking. Stuart, you know, we do need to get that um, uh, the glass thing for everybody at home to see just how this table is shaking. Oh, we have, a, we have an empty chair as well. I tell you what, why don't I put this just for now, just before we start it. Hang on. Do you want to marble in there? Let's start to see if a marble will work. No, just because you want to just hear if you it. turn it the other way out, would a marble not come out? It's not going to work. No, no we'll, we'll do that later. It's doing it now. Come on. Shake, shake that marble. Shake it. No. You can't hear it. Never mind. Right, let's get on with the experiment. Oh, again. What's that? Okay, I don't think it's going to work. Well, the, the higher you have it, the more it Okay, moves. try. Go on then. Okay. Shake this table, please. Shake the table. Vibrate it. 
Vibrate the table. Very hard. Please use all your energy now. It's not working. You can't hear it. It's moving. It's moving. Oh my gosh. It is. <gasps> What we're going to do now is we're going to... Good grief, you can see the table twisting. We're going to start the machine and we're going to charge the room with energy whilst concentrating around this table and see what happens. We can't, you won't be able to hear us, so good luck everybody and concentrate. Let's bring these spirits into the room, please. Use this energy now. Use your energy. table come forward come into this room now come into this room let us hear you let us see you let us hear us let us see you we want to know that you're here can we do another burst please another one please 20 seconds come on 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 This table now. Come and join us at the table. Talk to us. Let us know. <laughs> a stone. A stone. Something has dropped. Keep going. Another burst, please. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Concentrate. Keep it going, please. Thank you. Do something for us. Throw things. Show us that you're here. Use all this energy. All this. Come on. 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 Come in any way, shape or form you can, please show us you're here. You've already knocked the bowl off of the glass. Move it again for us. Oh, I've definitely, definitely got something here. <laughs> I am okay, out of breath. Listen. I'm absolutely out of breath. I am. <laughs> cool. Just keep going. Go on, Brian. I've definitely, definitely got something coming through now. Go on. Why? I was the first. First. Table shaking, table shaking. I was the first. I should not have been. I was innocent. What did they accuse me of? Stuart, we need this stuff on the table. What? Accusing you of what? What? Accused you of what? They accused me of the hierarchy. They accused me. I was the first to go, oh, I can't the first to suffer. Do you know I've got a tightening? Oh, do you know I was about to say I've got a tightening around my throat? Oh then. God, are you all right? You okay? You okay? <coughs> What's first to hang. Oh really? The first, the first one. I was the first. Fingers on the glass. Are you all right? Are you okay? Just when you said that, I was why? I was, why? Feeling, I was feeling the tightening and constricted. Hand on the table. I'm not surprised. Okay. The force is incredible. Who are you? Spell out your name. Spell out your name. Yeah, Who are you? Is it me or is it getting colder? Freezing. Oh, God. Spell out your name. G. Continue. I'm sorry. Continue. What's that? That's the w. w. Okay. Are we talking to Gwen? Yes. All right, Gwen. Hello, ha hello Gwen. Gwen. How many of you are here in this room with us now? Please tell us. How many of you are here in this room? What's that? Five. Five. Oh, 51. Again. Ah, 51. 51. Wow. No, I know what that means. I know what that means. What Fred, has, mean? Fred has already told me what that means. It's something to do with the Psalms. It, they wanted forgiveness. 
Is this right, Gwen? Is this to do with the Psalms? Yes. Do you want forgiveness, Gwen? Yes, all right. But Gwen, how many of you are here in the room with us now? Tell us. Five. No, 51. Yeah, but I've just said about the Psalms and you said yes, and now you're saying there are 51 of you. Is that not her saying, do the Psalms and I'll tell you? Is that what you want? Do you want us to do the Psalm, read the Psalm out for you? Do you want us to read the Psalm out? I don't know about you, but I've got a massive headache. headache. Mm -hmm. Me too. Blooming heck. Okay. Right, I'm putting my earpiece in because Fred might be able to help I really here. Really, I experienced, you know, the, the strength of this. Did you see that? Did anybody witness that stone yeah. dropping yeah. here? Yes, I'm not witnessing the, the falling of it, but I can tell you which one it was. It was this one here. It was that one. How do you know? From the heat? From the heat source. Right. Yes. Okay. But there's nothing above. I'm just thinking no, of the... No, I checked that. I checked there's nothing. There's any falling plaster okay. not. Fred, I need your help here. Can you give me something to ask that only you would know the answer to? That only you would know the answer to, rather than just a yes or no answer? Um, a vet, I know uh, who's Brian's picking up there. She was the uh, Gwen, uh, Gwen Ellis, who was the first uh, witch to be uh, hung for black arts. There were other witches for magic and sorcery, but she was the first one uh, accused of practicing the black arts, and she was tried at Denbyshire Court. Um, she used to, one of her things she used to do was, um, when she used to heal people, she used to uh, use the words, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. She used to start with that, so maybe if you try that. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Gwen, does that mean anything to you? Did you used to say that, Gwen? Yes. But I need something else, Gwen, Leslie, and um, Gwen and Leslie, yeah. Um, Fred and Leslie, I need yeah. something, not a yes and a no answer. I need like a date or something. Um, ask her uh, what year she was hung. What year were you hanged, Gwen? Tell me the year. But that's when she was, I don't know when the case was then. Well, was then was Come on, what year were you yeah, hanged, tried, Gwen? Can you remember? Gwen, tell us. Come on. Please tell us, what year was it that you were actually hanged? The first to hang. Yvette, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, the other woman that was mentioned uh, was a woman called Jane Conway. Okay. Okay. The other woman, Gwen, the other woman that you were with, can you, can you give me her first name then? Give me her first name. I'm taking my finger off. Give me your, her first name. I'll take or her name. Please, give me her name. Give me her name. Come on. Come on, give me her name. The other woman that you were talking about, what is her name? No. Why, why no, Gwen? Why no? You feel that she involved you. She actually implicate, you know, implicated in what? She, she actually involved you in what? Oh, that's so cold. Tell us her name, Gwen. Tell us her name. She's saying no, no, no. She, she's speaking to me now. Will you tell me? Will you tell me then? Yes, okay, go on then. Jane. How did Blue Peter's youngest presenter... Don't talk over me, because let's face it, this show's all about me. <laughs> and his youngest presenter... Don't talk over me, because let's face it, this show's all about me. <laughs> and an ambitious cameraman... <laughs> what the bumper. Get off my bum! ...become Britain's paranormal power couple. <laughs> and what's life and marriage in front of the camera really like? You're such a pervert. The whole f crew standing in a f car park. Oh, dear. It's Living with Yvette and Carl, this Saturday at 9, exclusive to Living. Bring these spirits into the room, please. 
Use this energy now. Use your energy. Keep going, another burst, please. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the village of the dam. Tonight, the shock. We are using technology developed by Nikolai Tesla at the beginning of the last century. The man was a scientific genius and also a paranormal investigator. Now, Yvette Fielding has been talking to us through that break. They've had some remarkable results already. They may have contacted a woman, possibly a woman executed or at least tried as a witch called Gwen. Stones have been flying. We've been hearing whistling. But Yvette has a request from our audience. Two questions, really. First, would you like Yvette and the team to conduct a seance? Yes. Yeah. I think that's a fairly definitive yes. And also, do you think it would be useful or desirable to have more electricity in that room to provide more energy? Would you like to see more electricity? Yeah. Okay. Yvette, a couple of borderline unanimous yeses there. Yes, we'd love a seance, and yes, the audience would love to see more of that remarkable electrical technology, please. Okay. Thank you very much, audience. We will do that. Um, just in the break, Brian, he's, he's actually said for the first time, after the electricity stopped, so much information was coming through from Gwen. And you were saying, weren't you, that she was telling you that Elizabeth was her sister and Elizabeth taught Gwen how to charm. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I was saying to you. You know, I, thought, I was thinking back to earlier this evening and, uh, when we were standing in a hall upstairs. And members of the audience were throwing out some names in actual fact, you know, one of them, yeah. which indeed was uh, Elizabeth. She's only telling me, in actual fact, is Gwen here, that it was Elizabeth, her, her sister, who had died, actually taught her how to. I heard that. What was that? That was a woman. It was all before. That's what I was trying to tell It was a woman. Yeah. Go on, keep talking about how it. To, uh, who taught her how to charm, to heal, you know? And yeah. And, and basically got her into this business, this whole, this whole thing, fortune telling, whatever. Okay. Let's see if she's here, but also if she can bring others to the table. Okay. Let's concentrate. We're going to put our fingers on the glass. Oh, do you think we should... <coughs> is that tapping under the table? That was me then. Though, okay. I do apologise. Should we... Do you think we should put our fingers on the glass and see what happens while the electricity's going? See whether it moves round, or do you think we should just do a second? What do you think we should do? Let's, let's, let's carry on trying to communicate while this is happening. No, but with our fingers on the glass? No, or? I think it's just... No, just okay, no, all right, let's see what happens. This is, this is happening. <laughs> okay, start the machine, please. Here we go. Right, concentrate, everybody. Our energy's going round the table. All right, round the table. Can I just say, I've got a pain in my chest. Has anybody else got a pain in their yeah. chest? You have? Yeah. I'm short of breath, completely short of breath. Yeah. Completely oh, short of breath, but yeah. <sighs> Did you see the table twisting? Yes. Yeah. Is that someone had all the sides of it and was actually yeah. trying to twist it off of the uh, plane? Okay. Oh, dear. Gee, I could have somebody was right behind me when that was. 
Come on, do something. Use that energy. This place is charged Come with on. energy now. When you're angry, you're angry. What happened to your course? Come through to us. Show us, show us, give us a sign. You're here. I know you're here. Come and throw something. Stone came down. What was that? What? Is someone over there? Oh, I see Did it. you see it? What is it? Is someone over there? Is it a shadow? There's someone standing there, isn't there? There's nobody there. Nobody living there. It's gone. Oh, there's, there's somebody standing there. Thank you. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Throne! Throne! Something thrown in. What was that? The I don't know. Or something, something or whatever came over here. Yeah. Be careful, Carl. Sit back down. Keep the energy going. Keep going. There's, there's a shadow. What was it? A stone. It's a stone uh, this hmm? big grey stone. A big grey stone. Can you show the heat on the thermal imaging camera? Oh, Can you that? see it? Is it heat or cold? Heat, definitely. Definite there you go. heat. Heat source there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Do that again, whoever you are. Do it again. Come towards us. Come sit by this table. Come sit in the empty chair. Here we go. Come on. Move these marbles. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. The table is going, but the marbles ain't shaking. Come on. Right, we'll put the ball on top of any of it. The what? The ball. I'm wondering if you actually put it to the outer edge. Oh, might, it might oh, work. Oh, yeah. Ready? Vibration. Come on. Shake this table. Shake it. There's no one there. There's nobody there. Nobody there whatsoever. I you? saw no one like living. a dark well, shadow. There's definitely somebody standing there. Definitely. I'm starting to get scared now. Yeah. Come on. Come towards us now, all of you. We invite you into this place, all of you now. Come towards us. Here we go. Come towards us now. Can you hear that? There's a movement. Come towards us. Right out there. It is freezing. Come towards this table, all of you. Walk towards us. Show yourselves. Oh. What? What? Brian, you okay? Oh, no, what do you know? I heard that. That was a growl. It was like a. Mm. Someone just put their hand on my shoulder. Did they? No, seriously, no. No, you were nowhere near. Not that boom or anything. No, no. It's funny, at that same time, I actually thought I saw somebody at that door, a shadow at that door there. There's no one behind the door. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Come towards us. Throw something else. Shake the table. Try and lift the table up in the air. Touch us. Let your presence be known. We, we don't mean you any harm. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come towards us now. Use our energies. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come and sit at this chair, one of you. Sit at the chair around this table. Walk into this room. If you are here, then let yourself be known. Shout out, use your voice. Copy me. Ah. You right, what? Oh. What? What's the matter? You just grabbed all my hand and pulled it away. But I, ha I had your hand. I'm Carl. Are you all right, Carl? Don't what, just what was that? Me right the same time. really sharp right on my side. Yeah? Yeah, didn't like right. that at all. Are you all right, Kath? Are you okay? Yeah, fine. So what, what's in this? Kathy, okay. right. We, we need Some... to know what's in this room. Well, let's carry There's on. There's something in this room. Let's not analyse. Let's keep anything. going. We'll analyse it later. Okay. Is that something maybe trying to get in there? Yeah. Maybe. Oh, trying to hold hands. Yeah. Well, what should we do? Let's join. Let him hold hands. No, you sit and hands next to him. I'm not moving. Maybe we need to... Let's invite him to come in and join the circle. Okay. We're thinking it, it would wobble more on the outer edge, which it seems to. Yeah. Right, you ready? You are. I'm worn out. Yeah, well, yeah. What's that? It's been cold. Okay. It has gone really cold. Come on, come and join us. One of you sit at the table. We invite you to sit at the table. If you wish to hold our hands, then take our hands. Come on. Whoever you are, all of you. We invite all of you from this place, from the land that was built before here, 
sorry, from the, <laughs> from the land here before this place was built. Come towards. It's okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's, all right. it's just sat there. It just, could have just been. Could it just, it's just, it's just it's vibration. Got, it's the table that's vibrating that's moving. It's whatever's yeah. moving. Yeah. Okay, yeah. keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. What was that? What the hell was that? That was a deep. Ooh. Yeah. That sounded like a very deep. Hum. Do it again. Use the energy. All of you in this place. In this place. Come towards us now. Come towards us. Come on, whoever made that noise, do it again. Come on. Come on. Okay. I heard it then. There's people coming in. Oh. Yes. 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 yes, I can. What is it? Please, what is it? The third of seven nights of fright, right here on Most Haunted Live, the village of the dam, broadcasting from a former mental asylum. We've had some remarkable results already. We want to hear from you and more after this break from our remarkable demonologist and black art specialist, Fred Batt. That's after this. chest. Has anybody else got a pain in their yeah. chest? You have? Okay. Whoa, 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 throne, throne. Something thrown. What was that? I don't know, something. Or something. Or came oh, it was like a... Who's mm. just put their hand on my shoulder? What's the matter? I just grabbed all my hand and pulled it away. Hello and welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the village of the damned. Tonight, the shock. We are using technology from the beginning of the last century. Technology invented, devised and then worked upon by Nikolai Tesla, a scientist and a paranormal investigator. A man fascinated by what might be on the other side of this existence. Now, at the moment, Yvette and the team are conducting a Ouija board session in the ground floor of the southwest wing of this dilapidated building, a former mental asylum. In about three minutes time, a member of our audience will join them as I extend the icy hand of invitation, clench it into a frigid fist and then point the dread and dreary digit of doom at one person in the audience. Angie Camburn from Reading, it is you! Being whisked away now to the visual site by Helen, our co-executive producer, a natural redhead who is also first aid trained. As she moves through the gothic corridors of this mid-Victorian building, who knows what Angie may face when she joins Kath and Yvette and Carl and Stuart and Dr. Kieran O'Keefe and, of course, our medium clairvoyant and psychic artist, Brian Shepherd. She's being assisted there by Helen. After that, Angie, you are on your own. We've had so much information coming in very early in tonight's programme. Let's go straight away now to Leslie Smith and to Fred Batt, our academic historian, and, of course, our demonologist and black arts expert. Leslie and Fred, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we've been hearing an awful lot about Psalm 51, Leslie, which is, of course, from the light. Do you have something from the dark for us as well? Um, from the dark side of this is why would they use Psalm 51? Because within it, it talks about relieve me of my sins, of all my iniquities, both within myself and society as a whole, which is crucial because the witch isn't just talking about herself, but it's society as well. With regard to Gwen, however, we think it's a miscarriage of justice, don't we? Because she did start so, yeah. by sending Brian the message, or he intuited the me message, I'm innocent, it wasn't me. That came across very clearly. She also said Conway. I'm sure the audience will remember that. The word Conway, do you remember? Well, the woman who'd put her in this situation was called Jane Conway. And we think she was a local drab, which is a name for a prostitute, the lower order prostitutes, who'd been with a local lord and not received a fee, involved this witch, and it ended up costing the witch her life, didn't it? That's correct, yeah. So you said earlier on, Fred, that this was the first person executed in this area for witchcraft? It's not um, as such. It's the first person executed in this area for actually saying she practiced the black arts. There were others 
uh, uh, hung for magic and sorcery, but this one actually studied the black arts. And what is the difference between the black arts and witchcraft? Well, witchcraft, you've got white witchcraft, which she was a white witch. She used to heal people, heal animals. People came from miles to, to see her. Um, but she but the black in, arts involved the devil? Involved the, the black arts involved calling up the devil and doing various nasty things to people. Okay, with that in mind, let's rejoin Yvette Fielding and the vigil team there at the site of tonight's investigation in the southwest wing of this remarkable, dilapidated, crumbling but still beautiful building in North Wales, a former mental asylum. Let's get straight back to Yvette now. Yvette. On the yeah, ground. Okay, all right. This is quite loud tapping. Thank you. Can you please tap out how many of you are here now? Six. Five, five. five or six? Five, six. Still going. Is it still going? I can't hear it no more. No, it's not there. What value are you talking? It's still going. All right. It was about like eight, wasn't it? Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah. Can you do something for us? Can you do something else? Can you throw things or make noises with your voices? Two for yes, one for no. Let's see what happens. Ooh. What's up, Brian? You seen something again? Yeah. Just beyond. Well, just frankly, beyond Carl, the, the group of us here, just beyond Some Carl. Some Chris I can tell you, there's nobody living down in there because I had the oh, thermal right. imaging trained there the entire time. Okay. So there's no heat source down All there. Right. That's for sure. But let's charge the electricity downstairs just... whilst we're upstairs. Okay. See what happens. Okay, Stuart. Yeah. yeah. My head is killing me from that electricity, which yeah. Akiran, yes. that's apparently what happens, isn't it, because of some chemicals? Yes, basically when, the, when it, the coil starts, it emits ozone and nitrous oxide, and that can make you a bit lightheaded and give you a slight headache. Okay. As well as the sound, it's very loud, that's okay. going to create a headache too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Everybody stand still. Come on, come towards us now. Come and talk to us. Smash the windows. Talk to us. Use your voice. Oh, crying. Oh, That's it, like that. What? What? What was that? <laughs> What did he say? What do you mean? It said something. It right? said there was a voice. I don't know what it said, but it definitely said something. Die. Get off! It said die. That's what it yeah. said. Die. Yeah, I'm not. Give it, it, it another shot of the electricity. So let's listen out again. Can we turn the electricity on again, please? Like in an it. accent, no. In an accent. That's yeah. stupid. But that's not I'm not yeah. kidding. That was. That was just. That was. It was. It wasn't right. Speak again, please. Whoever you are, use your voice and speak again. Are they turning it on again? Oh, is this the audience member? Angie. Hiya, Angie. Hi, welcome, hi. welcome. Hi. How are you? Hi, Come and stand next Angie. to Kath. Hi. It's all right. Don't worry. That's just the electricity. Come and stand next to Kath. Okay. Use the energy and use the, say your say your name or shout out a word again, please. Oh, that was that was a whisper. Did you hear it again? It's coming from back here. Really I can't hearing. hear the damn oh, thing. Uh, I'm taking this earpiece out now. I've been hearing voices. Talk to us again, whoever you are. Talk to us again. Come on, there's tapping. She's tapping. No, no, I don't, I don't understand. What are you getting, Brian? That's not right. No, I, just, I can't understand the language. But... Is it Welsh? Kath, what, you said you heard something just now. What, could it have, it's Welsh. It, it's, could it have been Welsh? Probably. It was well, a, it's still a funny accent. Yeah. Funny accent, yeah. yeah. Now it's jumbled to me. Come speak to me properly. Speak to me. It was me. just strange. I couldn't make Make me out. understand. Die. Die. He died. He died. And what? Whistle. 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 Oh, yeah. Whistle. Can you hear it? Whistle. 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 
Whistle. Whistle for us. See, I'm still getting the same thread. You know, the same woman is trying to speak to me, trying to you know, make me understand. She died, she was hanged. This is Gwen. For, for Gwen, yeah, Gwen. For murder, charged with murder. Murder of who, Gwen? Murder of... And I broke... Uh, I broke his arm. I, he raised his hand to me. Why? All right, yeah, okay, I understand that. I understand that. He raised... She had an argument with someone. She fell out of favour with, with, with a man. Okay, he, he raised his arm to her. To strike him. To strike him, yes? You all right? You okay? You all right? Yeah. Well, the webcam might have caught that. Oh, brilliant. Can we look? Can, can we look in the... Uh, in the studio, Paul, can we make sure and see if the webcam might have caught that coming through the air? Who's that at the end? Me. Okay. Yeah. So he raised his to hand. To strike you, and yes, he's... Yeah. Did he learn? I broke his arm. I broke the very arm that he raised against me. I broke his arm. Evans. Evans? Robert... Robert... Robert Evans. Robert Evans? I broke his arm. Excuse me of that. Yes, I did it. Oh, Christ. Something breathe right in my ear then. Right. She's yeah, very much like she's very much with us. And there are others as well. How many others? How many more? Four, three, four others. Okay. I'm gonna throw this. Oh, Watch out, guys. Throw, throw this back! Here was other. Oh, no. Throw it back! Whistling, whistling. Throw it back! It's like she's standing in the middle of, you know, like there are four others around. What? What? What, what was that? What was that? Whistle. Whistle. Something flew past my face. Well, I, but I heard something land. Yeah. Did you? Yes. Did you hear it, Carl? I did, yeah. Carl, shall we split up now? Yeah. Okay. What? Charging again. Charging again. Use this energy, come on! Throw more things! Talk to us! Use your voice! You all right? What's the matter? Don't do that. Oh, no, Brian. Nice, Brian. Yeah. It's all right. Concentrate. Look at me. It's all right. You're all right. Okay. All right. Oh, just well, worry about that. Do that. Just understand. All right. I know. I know. They hanged her. Yes, of course. I understand that. Murder. And who are these other people, Gwen? Who are these other people? Standing around her. She's in the middle of other people. Oh, oh. Sorry. <laughs> really jumping. <laughs> yeah. Alice, did you do it? Oh, listen. Alice! Listen. Listen. That's from back here, way behind me. Oh that was God. That it was a keep, keep talking, Brian. Go on, this Brian. But you did it. Did you do it? It's like the accusers or something. It's like they're accusing this. Right, it's back here. I can hear it still. Do you guys want to stand out? The hum of electricity seems to have generated a hotbed of paranormal activity. This is Most Haunted Live. We are broadcasting from a former mental asylum in North Wales and we are using early 20th century technology to generate massive electrical charge. You've seen the results. More after this only on Most Haunted Live. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the village of the dam. We are broadcasting until midnight on Halloween from a former mental asylum right here in North Wales. It has been an uncanny first and second night and tonight promises to be even more explosive because we are marrying together the psychic intuitions of our clairvoyance with early 20th century technology, the technology of Nikolai Tesla. 
a man who worked extensively in science, in physics, in electricity, but also was a paranormal investigator. And so far, it has been fascinating. With me is our guest clairvoyant, Billy Roberts. Billy, there's a huge amount going on out there on the vigil tonight. And we've got Brian Shepard there trying to focus and concentrate surrounded by electricity and the team screaming and a Ouija session going on and stones flying. Where does that focus come from? Where do you find that ability just to narrow things down to what you're me, receiving? Me personally, yeah. I, it's a purely subjective ability. Um, and I think training teaches you to, to focus on various things. Women say they multitask, well so do we occasionally. And I think mediumship is like that. Use a part of your brain that's dormant in most people. It's to do with the pineal gland. And it's, it's all to do with training. The unfortunate thing for me is, um, although I'm in this, um, this building, um, because we've got so many people in the audience, I pick up things for people in the audience. So you have to isolate what is for them and what is for the, um, the building. So is it, and forgive me for oversimplifying it, is it a bit like being a human radio receiver? Well, you could receive lots of signals, you have to focus on what you want. That's exactly it. I'm a clear audience. It's, it's like having a radio inside my head. And I, I hear muffled sounds. Some I ignore until I get the, the right frequency. It's all to do with vibration. And then I'll home in on a particular sound. And they will speak to me. It can be either very specific or very incoherent and confused. Okay, thank you for the moment, Billy thank Roberts. You. And tonight on the show, a British television first, as Dr. Kieran O'Keefe, our trained resident parapsychologist, is going to be using a bizarre new piece of equipment which involves using a radio transmitter that seeks out white noise in the ether. While you ponder and look forward to that, let's find out what else you've been noticing and intuiting via the webcams and via watching the show, courtesy of Julian Clegg and his interactive team. Julian. Yeah, thank you, Paul. And lots of reaction. Talking of technology, we know you love all the new bits of kit that Kieran used, and you're loving the Tesla machine tonight as well. Thank you for your messages about that. It is amazing, isn't it? Let's look through the webcams and see what you're spotting on those right now. First of all, webcam one, the ground floor main ward. There it is right now, and you can see the Tesla machine uh, there in action. Uh, Joe and Jaden Medway, Kent said there appears to be a dog lying down in the doorway. Sharon and Linda and Derbyshire have seen quite a lot of activ activity traveling in and out of that doorway. Uh, and also Mike and Bolton have seen a vision of a woman uh, which appeared only the top of her body was visible then she walked through the door. And Reese in Kent can see a small flashing star. That might be what we're looking at there on that webcam. Uh, and he's uh, thinking, it's, uh, is it something else as well, I wonder. Interestingly, Reese, thank you for that. Webcam 2, the second floor, the ward there. Let's have a look at that one now. Kirsty and Taunton, Dan, Sarah and Carl and Chesterfield have all seen a figure walking amongst the team on the webcam. Stephen Kezer in Denton can see a figure in the left-hand corner which resembles someone holding a candle. And uh, Amanda, Michelle, Olivia and Christine in Dublin says there are two figures. One is a woman standing in the doorway and the other of a man standing in the corner of the room. They're loving the show, by the way. Webcam 3, the stairwell. Let's look at ha uh, that one right now. And there it is. And you can see the, the uh, camera moving across there. Kieran in Brentford has seen a mist-like figure on the right-hand side near the doorway. And Shirley in South Wales saw a woman and watched her for a couple of minutes. Her daughter and niece also spotted at different times what looks like uh, someone in a hat and a dress on and says the team should be careful tonight. And Joe in South Wales saw a black cat crawling next to the back wall in the archway on that webcam. Webcam 4, Susie in Nottingham has seen it, so there it is, webcam 4 has seen a dark shadow of a person walking by the screen which looks, uh, looks like it's going backwards and forwards quite a lot. And Ian and his wife are watching the webcams in Wishaw and they're seeing a lot of misty figures walking up and down on that webcam. Now, how to get in touch, you can uh, text me the word SCREEN to 80889. The text costs 50p plus one standard rate. And, of course, go to the website, mosthauntedlive.net, to look at the interactive mat, map and those uh, webcams, of course. Uh, I'll leave you with a couple of messages here. Uh, Lizzie and Bobby Tracy in Devon says the name Erin or Emma could appear tonight. Please be careful, team. These names feel dangerous, uh, she says. And Leanne in Mid Wales has noted that Carl and Kath have just said they heard someone say die. Brian also said that he heard someone talking to him in another language. Leanne says that die is the Welsh for the word to and is pronounced the same as die. So could that be the connection? I wonder. More from Interactive later. Paul, back to you. Thank you, Julian. Thank you for your input so far. Keep all that information coming to us as we go straight back now to Yvette Fielding and the team. They're in the southwest wing of this remarkable building. Yvette, back to you. We've not been asking out at all now. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to actually read out a witch's spell that Leslie has given me, um, a spell that um, these women would have said. I'm going to say it quite loud and see if we get any reaction whatsoever. Okay, so here we go. 
I hope I say this correctly. You can hold the walkie-talkie. That would be great. Okay. My head is killing me. Right. What's that? They're not moving up there. Carl and Stuart, by the way, are on the floor above us. There's no webcam and no camera up there, but they're hearing noises above us, but they just stood directly above us. Just check and see if they're walking. Okay. Carl, are you walking? What's that? That's in here. That was in there. Sorry, Kieran, what was that? Are you walking? Dead centre. The best we can be dead centre, and we are not moving a muscle. Tell them we're getting stuff down here. Okay, thanks, Carl. We're getting stuff down here. Thank you. Okay, you ready? For Gwen, the spirit of Gwen, if you can hear me, and all the other witches, healers. Listen to this, and if you like it, what was that? Something with us now. Hey, what, what, what was that? Bloody hell. If you like it, let us know. I touch, and I do not touch. I see, and I do not see you. Furku, Bafurku, Luku, Luku, Kataku, how do you say that? Kata Kataturku. Kataturku. I put you to bed, I wrench you, I hang you on the gallows with water and salt and incense which all have power by the wounds of Jesus which none can resist with incense, salt and water at every moment into the ditch with horrible worms, let them be strangled, let their bones be chewed away. Did you hear that? Yeah, What's that? There's four. Four in the room. Four in the room. What's that? There's four oh. in the room, now. Lots of noises from the stairwell. Is anyone in the stairwell? Yes. No, but we are in it too. No, none of us are in the stairwell. Where's the stairwell? We're all in the centre. Just me and Chris go. Well, Just me and Chris go. There's no camera up here. Anybody can go and have something to go and find. But kid, there's lots of room that sort of moves down. Okay, Carl, Yvette and Chris are moving to the staircase now, so they'll join you if you come down. Don't move, Carl! Don't move! Listen, it's over here again, Kieran. Come on, whoever you are. Come on, you get the idea, do it back. Down in the bottom of the stairwell. Huh? No? Uh, no, 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 come to us then. I was just checking to see if there was somebody on the stairwell. Come downstairs now. If there's anybody here, Make noises. Are you all right, Kath? Yeah. Did you just make a noise? Oh. What did you just call out? No, no, they're uh, whispering out here, just a whispering. Yeah. Did you hear that, Chris? I heard it. Yeah. It was like Kath. It was like Kath just uh, was moaning, at, you know, making a noise, like she'd just seen something. I call and shoot with you. They're coming down now. Well, I suggest that we split up now. Okay. Right, okay. Carl, Stuart? Yeah. Right. Should we split up? So, should we go Stuart, Kath, Brian, and Kieran? Were you throwing anything down here? Sort of trying to get some I throw threw back? something up the stairwell. Uh, oh, no, that no. was me. Just when we were coming down, we heard like this clatter okay. and thought. Yeah. Why, don't we take it, why don't we take it in, like you say, the, the, the main group stay here? And then a small group go off with the camera. Cool, let's do yeah? it. Okay, so, main group stay here. Why don't me and you go off on our let's own? Do it. Okay. okay, you take the, give me your stuff and I'll carry. Has somebody got those? Okay. I'll take the walkie. Kira's got the walkie. I've got your glove. Torch. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> We're okay. Sorry. Where are you going? Up there. Downstairs. What's it like up there, Carl? Can it's we go up there? It's, it's completely barren. But is it safe to go up there? It's very, yeah, it's safe, yeah. It's safe. Place to see. There's a lot of debris on the floor. A spider's web. Well, you'll see if I move it, can't you? Really strange. No. What have you got? Really strange thing when they're around her. Did it? Hmm. Just a bit of a white. Um, just like a spider's web. Where? Sort of around her? Or what? Not like that. Yeah? No, 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 I'm not suggesting that. Okay. I'm just saying that, because I was just going to say I don't mm -hmm. think it'll go up there. Right, Let's do you want to take this? Shall, shall I take the camera? Or should, should I? Yeah, we'll take the camera. Take the camera. Just take the camera. Take the camera? Can we go downstairs with the camera? It'll take two seconds just to put straight into the other cable. Oh, so we downstairs. have to repo. Right, yeah. okay. okay. Carl, why don't me and you just... Why don't me and you just oh, investigate okay. the bottom here? Here in these rooms. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to have to throw back to the studio the to, with Let's all of that. It. You take the main camera then, love. <laughs> I do know what's going on. You're being a bit bossy. Yeah. Uh, yes. See what you want to try living with her. Yes. You guys. Now this is going to be fascinating. I cannot remember a time on Most Haunted Live when Yvette and Carl have gone off together away from the rest of the team. To find out what happens, you must stay tuned and join us live for Most Haunted Live, The Village of the Damned. More after this. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, The Village of the Damned. Until Friday night at midnight, midnight on All Hallows' Eve, we are broadcasting from this former mental asylum in North Wales. Now, the team have separated. Yvette and Carl are on their own together. I think a Most Haunted Live first, as the rest of the team explore the southwest wing of this amazing building. Let's get straight back to the vigil. Right, Paul, um, it's just me and Carl. What we've done, we're up on the... Uh... On the first floor, the rest of the team are downstairs um, with the lightning machine, as I like to call it. Um, and it's being fired at the moment, as you can probably hear, uh, for energy. Once they've fired it a few times, then the rest of the team are going to do an investigation downstairs while myself and Carl are going to conduct uh, an investigation up here. So we're going to start calling out and see if anything happens, yeah? Yeah. Okay, as we go. Come on, do something if you're here! Throw things! By the way, Robin's here as well, just so you know if you see anybody in the background. There's poor Robin, and we stand all on his own. <laughs> if you get too scared, Robin, come and join me and Carl. Come on, do something, throw things! I'm gonna throw a, I'm gonna throw a big rock. Let's see if it comes back. Okay, throw it down this way, Carl. Hang on a second, let me what? get a shot of it. Okay, come on! Use this energy! It's my walkie-talkie, it's my walkie-talkie. <laughs> it fell off at the Crying same time. Now. Brown trouser moment. Oh, come on, throw it back. Tapping, tapping. Twice. It's walking. It's it's tapping, it's walking. Come towards us now. What is that? That is walking, that's not tapping. It's walking. Come. What's the matter, what's the matter? <gasps> What is it? Cool, I thought something I thought something was right behind me then. Come on. Let's walk in these end rooms. Okay. I don't like that walking. I've got the cable behind you. I'll do a bit of cable bashing. It's about time you let me keep. <laughs> okay. What's going on there? In this first one. What's that on the wall? What's that? What is it? Is it smeared on the wall? What is I it? I don't know. Ugh. I don't know. Use our energy. Use the energy that we've given you to do. What was that noise? There was a bang and then a sound, a, 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 a speaking. Radio mic. I know this might not work. 
work. I'm getting a bit closer to the floor because it sounds like it's coming through the floor. You might be able to hear it. Tap if you can hear us. Do you mean me harm? Do you mean Carl harm if you do tap twice? Well, come on then, do something. No. No. You don't want to do anything, but you don't like us then. What's that? What is it? I hope you can all hear that. Do you know what it's like? It's, it's almost like it, whatever it is doesn't like you telling it what, what to do. So it's almost like you're saying, do it now. Yeah. What? Jesus. Sorry, sorry for saying that. Room, surely. It's not. Can you tap on this window? Can you tap on the window? Can you move this light shade? Copy Carl, move the light shade. Watch it doesn't fall down, bloody hell. Move the light shade, or stop the light shade from swinging. I heard like a grumbling sound. A groaning sound? Yeah, from in here. Hello? I've got the cable. If you are here, stop this messing around and do something so we know you're definitely here. I heard a woman. What, what was it doing? A woman going, eh! hasn't made a noise because it sounded like a woman. Kieran, is Kath sort of going, oh, making a noise, a strange noise? Hi, Yvette. No, she isn't making any strange noise at all. The only thing is Stuart is asking out for something to happen. That's it. I can hear that. We've just heard what well, I've just heard. Um, like a wailing noise from a woman. I thought maybe Kath was frightened or something like that. Oh, we've heard but that we I thought it was... We yeah. did hear a similar sound, but it's definitely not us. It's not me. Oh, I, I did make a noise about two minutes ago where I said, copy me, and I went, ah! Oh. No, we heard it that earlier. No, That's we? what they yeah, probably yeah. heard. OK, we'll keep quiet for the next five minutes. Okay, if you, I'll let you know if I'm going to do a strange, you know, copy me noise. Okay. Come on, do something. Throw something. Make a noise. Smash some of the glass. Come on. Smash the glass. Come on, do something. continually like as if something's following us it's always behind us though and it's never you can never pinpoint where it is come on do something <laughs> What's the matter? i keep getting things touching my bloody ear oh, big banging robin can Why? you hear this can you hear the banging yes yes i don't like that that's something <gasps> that's got to be a car outside that's a car outside yeah yeah, Definitely, with big bore exhaust, whatever it's called. Yeah, it's probably, yeah. yeah. Come on, can you do something? Show yourself. Touch one of us. Come on. Come on, stop this messing about and do something. 
Whistling. 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 Can you hear it, Robin? Yeah. It's not coming from that car, is it? No. Could it be coming from? No, I'm just. Not whistling, are you? No, no. Some. I know. I'm just trying yeah, to. Decent service. Let's go down this far end, car. Shall I pick this late clay cable up for you? That's right. Yes. Yeah? I've got it. I've got it here. Okay. Please, come on, do something. Introduce yourselves to us properly. Ooh. George, did you hear that? What? The moan. I just made a noise, I just went, ooh. No, it wasn't that, it was a deep moan. What's ooh. that? What's that? What? Is it the rain? Yes, the rain. Okay, cool. What's in here? Well, about as far as I can go, Dom. Okay. Yeah, I've got some. Hey, what's in here? I can't go any further. No, no, no. I'm just. Ah, okay. Yes, it's my bottom. Uh, no, it's a plastic um, a barrel I've just rolled across the floor. Sorry. I can't focus. <laughs> okay. You got it. Come on, move the barrel back. Gwen, if you're a witch, if there are any other spirits here. It's tapping again. Yeah, but I can't pinpoint it. Well, that, they're here, though, when they do the tapping. That's the thing. But come on. You've come got on. so much energy. We've given you so much energy. Do something else. Move that barrel. Is anything happening down there, Kieran? Nothing for the moment. No, I don't like this place at all. I can feel like I feel like they killed my people. Just, just, where are you? I'm here. I feel like people are right next to you all the time. And, oh, something just touched my leg. Are you all right? Oh, you okay? Leg. It's not a cable. There's no cable there. No, the table was on the other side. Something just definitely touched my leg. I don't like it. I'd like to get out of there. Oh, oh sorry. All right. It's getting colder, but things are hotting up. The fear there is almost tangible, and you're starting to see the scale of dilapidation inside this former mental asylum. This is Most Haunted Live, the village of the damned. We're going to be back before you know it. Tap, if you can hear us. Do you mean me harm? Do you mean Carl harm if you do tap twice? Well, come on then, do something. No. No. You don't want to do anything, but you don't like us then. Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the village of the damned, and it's night three of a seven-night paranormal investigation right here from, from a mental asylum in North Wales. A vast and crumbling building, and tonight's vigil has been intense and terrifying. Let's get straight back to the investigation now. Paul, if you can hear a stranger, we're all back together. Um, Carl and I are getting a little bit frustrated because 
you know, when you sort of like put a lot of thought into an investigation, for instance, the Tesla um, experiment, and then you charge the whole place with energy, I think you expect just so much more, don't you? So we're a little bit frustrated, but the think, night's not over yet. I think it's, there has so much happened. So much oh, stuff yeah. already has happened. Yeah. Things you, keep, you kind of just want more and you more do. and more and more. Now, yeah. Kieran has got, if you hear a strange noise, all will be explained in a moment. But let's walk through this way, everybody. Um, it's a bit grim down here. We're back on the ground floor, and we did hear, uh, Carl and I, when we were up, upstairs, I don't know if you could hear it in the studio, knocking, didn't we? And at one point, it actually sounded like footsteps going around Carl. Watch the floor, everyone. Mm. You all right, Brian? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Where does that go, Carl? That goes back, back up, upstairs, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Right, OK. Everybody all right? Yes. David, you OK? Kath, you all right? Where does that go? No, it's a dead end. It's right, a dead end. Just it, just end. it just goes under the floor. Okay, everybody watch your footing. What? Okay. Oh, it's horrible. It's all dripping on your hair. What's down there? What's down there, Daniel? That's where we, we started first night. Oh, I know. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. I recognise it now. We had that staircase. Well, I'm following you, Carl. Well, what are we going here? Because we've not... This has got a lot of stories through it down here. You alright, Stu? Yep, yeah, yeah, fine. Are there any spirits here? We know you're here. Come on. That's a bit of a... Listen. What did you hear? Uh... Knocking? No. You? It was a... Uh... Anybody else hear it? Or was it just me? Just... Listen, listen. Oh, you listen. Know. Is anyone hearing that? Carl! Yes? We're getting some uh, whining. If you're here, do that noise again. If you're here, make the noise again, please. There's definitely something here. Oh, <gasps> hey! Oh, hey, no. that was good. That was in here, wasn't it? No. That was a... Ooh. Well, it, what is this place here? Well, I don't know, but it sounded this... like... Well, what is it? Well, this would have been uh, a linking part that's new. Oh, what? It's not that old. It's not as old as the rest of the building. Yeah. Uh, Be careful if you that's... What are these? They look like little cells. Little rooms. What, what? It's not clear if they would have been Oh, there. look through here. Well, they wouldn't be bedrooms, Kieran, surely. What's all around here? You keep going down there. You all right, Kath? Let's keep you all right the way down. Oh, I'm sorry. I might have to put my hood up. What? Hello? Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Ooh. Now, that was definite, wasn't it? Yeah. It's a definite, almost reply to yeah. what you said. Hey, I don't know. That was in there. There's nothing in that room. Well, it seemed like that. It sounded like it was coming oh. from behind us. Did no, to me. No, to me. OK. Well, it's it's that cool. acoustic thing again, though, isn't it? Yeah. See, that? that's outside there. Hello? It's just a large empty space, isn't it? If I... Sorry. Ooh, how weird was that? Oh, never mind. Hello? Can we make that noise again? Turn your torches off. Hello, whatever spirit's here, call out to us again. There! Whistling back where? from that way. You know where we were when we first came in here? I yeah. think we should go back because we were okay. hearing noises. Wow. That was almost, that was almost a, 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 a word. Was it? Yeah. Let's do a bit of thanks box up here, Kieran. Uh, up in that area? Here. What do you think? Where we, where we first heard the noises? We can do, yeah. Let me just run and get it because I've got a sat on the Ouija board. Oh, so I'll okay. Run and get it. Or do you want to go back into that room and do Frank's box? Should we do that? Yeah, Would that be easier? We'll do yeah. that then. Let's just stay around here and see if we get any more noises. Carl? Yep, it's coming. Are you all right? How far can we get this cable? How far can yeah, we get the we'll cable? We can go a bit further if you want to, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going until we stop, Carl. Because when we go through there, yeah. there's another corridor and another set around there. You can go on forever in this place. But literally, I just saw two people standing there looking at me. Oh, really? Well, and I thought, oh, they're obviously one of, yeah, a couple of us. Two and they've gone. 
And I don't know if they're us or whether they're, they're, they're spirits. It was the group. Well, no, 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 and they really, you see, you see, how I see, just, you see how Stuart is there? Yeah. That's exactly how they looked. Great. Right. But just two, and when I looked, I thought, oh, well, the same. And I put the torch up, and they'd gone. Are you saying we can go and sort of like have a look? How far? Going closer yeah. towards the studio that yeah, way. We're going to get extraneous noise. Aren't yeah. We? Um, it's not that close. Okay. Let's go then. Just what, what, they, what they were used for, those rooms. You hear that sound? It there might was be therapy. No. Yeah. No, seriously, there was. There was. It was there. The trouble is the floor. Oh, Christ! What? The floor's weak in here, just be careful. All right, all right. It's just not Yeah, exactly. I saw a figure in that door. Just be careful on this floor. All right, I'm not going to run in. I'm not going to run in. It was in that. Yeah, exactly. That's where they were. Listen, listen, there's something in there. We're definitely getting a noise over here. What sort of noise? Well, it's like there's somebody over there moving about. Hello? Are you here? Are you here? Oh, running. Is that all difficult watching? because of the rain, isn't yeah, it? But it, it was there. I, I'm going to walk. I don't let anyone else come because the floor's a bit oh, heavy. Oh, oh, oh Carl, be oh, careful. Be, be, just be, no, I was going to show you what, where, where I saw them no, standing. Oh, my God, look, look at the holes in the floor. Exactly. This torch is useless, it's dying. We shouldn't move in too much further either because we could go down. Oh, thanks. So. This there it is again. What? That noise. Well, it couldn't have been people because there's a big hole behind me. It was actually one person standing here. Exactly. Well, and there's no way they would have gone out here, there's a big hole here. Well, security wouldn't be stood like that. No, what would they be doing? <laughs> what? Stuart's getting a bit. Stuart's saying that someone's just walked past the door up here, Carl. Well, that will not take you to the studio, though. Yeah, it does take you to the studio. Everybody's talking at the same time. Sorry, Carl. <laughs> ah! oh, holy shit! What the? Fuck! You're hearing this, Carl? Yeah. Do I have to have the woods here. come down or something? Shit! Shit. Everybody stand back because that could have been falling debris. No, no that was careful. Careful. Yeah, but it could have been. Oh, that was a window coming Somebody through. Carl, please come away. Oh, come on, Stuart. Yeah, Stuart, come on. 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 Yeah, Stuart, Something's going in your eye? No. No. Look down. Look over to the left. Over to the right. I can't see anything. Okay, so it's like okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Right, whoever that was, do it again! Do you hear that? Yeah. Yes, oh, yeah, I did. Okay. What the hell was that called? Don't put steps in there, Don't, don't, go, don't in go in there. there. Do it again, whoever you are. Oh, shit. It's here. Smash some more glass. Oh, Is that we, glass behind you? No, we've got two people here running about. You know that? Who have we got? Holy crap. Did you hear it? Did you hear that? Oh, please tell me. Oh, God. It was a... Uh. Nobody heard it. David, did you hear it? Oh, shit. I heard it. And I know I didn't imagine it either. No, definitely, I'll get them two people sort of running about, you know, just like do dashing around okay. from in the doorways, out of doorways. Right. Well, well. What if you said, Carl, be careful, careful, careful. Yeah, no, please, be Carl. Careful. Carl, please don't walk on there. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. All right, but that's obviously dangerous. Whoever you are, do something else. There was somebody there. 
There's no other door out there, is there? This that, is the impression on. I'm getting. Yeah. No, I don't want anybody else to go in there. No, Brian, come back, please. No, 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 please. The more weight we put on here. Mm. Look it at it the floor, for God's sake. We've got to be so careful, Carl. This floor could go at any time. Look at it. Let's stand back in this corridor. I'm absolutely agreeing. Are you all right, Stewie? How's I'm your eye? It's fine. fine. It's, it's all right. Good to see you. Right, guys, let's all stand still and see Carl. If you stay there, yeah, yeah you. you keep an eye out and I'll call out. Everybody stand still. Okay. Turn your torches off. Whoever you are, if there are two men here. Remember, the team are operating in a potentially very dangerous building, and of course the investigation is happening under extreme circumstances, which means occasionally there is extreme language for which we apologise. This is Most Haunted Live, the village of the Dam. Tonight is the night of the shock, and we're back with more shocking revelations after this. Hello and welcome back to Most Haunted Live, the village of the damned and the penultimate part of tonight's paranormal investigation. This is the third of seven nights of fright. We are with you until midnight on Halloween. Until then, who knows what lurks waiting for us right here in this remarkable building, a former asylum in North Wales. It is an absolutely horrendous night weather-wise, but a fascinating night as far as the vigil and the investigation goes. Let's get straight back now to Yvette Fielding and the team. See, I wish I'd seen it. In the doorway, yeah? In the yeah. Doorway, and then I saw another one in the other doorway. Right, you ready? This, this, I am so excited because, just to explain, Kieran, uh, what this is because we, we've used it in America and yeah. it was actually it was fascinating and this is the first time on UK TV that you're seeing this essentially it's a prototype of something called Frank's box very simply put think about a radio we should call it Yvette's box Yvette's box <laughs> maybe not <laughs> think of a radio without a tuner that scans through all the frequencies very very quickly and the principle being that the spirit should be able to use the frequency in some way so you actually listen out for words and yes, you will hear radio stations, you will hear DJs talking, but the idea is that spirits use those frequencies. They'll either focus on a particular word, or in the static, you'll hear words coming through. Okay. Well, because it works off static, why don't we use the electricity? Let's give it a go. Let's do that. Let's give um, some short blasts. First mm, of all, hold your hands. hands. Yeah. Let's concentrate. Mm -hmm. oh, so loud. Oh, Here we go. Communicate with us now. Communicate with us now if you can. Table shaking, table shaking. I will. Thank you, Stuart. Okay. Right, you ready? If you're here in this room, communicate with us. Communicate with us, talk to us. What's your name? What is your name, please? What is your name? Tell us your name. Who are you? Not hearing anything at the moment, just static. Oh, stuff coming through, is it?
Tell us your name. Here we go. What is your name? Are you happy for us to be here, yes or no? Yes or no? What's that? Yes or no? No. 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 Okay. What's your name? What? What's your name? Robert? Hmm? It's a Robert. It's, 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 it's Robert. That's what I heard earlier. Mm -hmm. Give us a message. Say yes. You're here as well. Say your name again, Robert. Say your name again. Oh! Hey! See? See? I think that's his dad. That's okay, Robert. all right. Robert, did you die here? Say yes or no. Did you die here? Yes or no? Yes. Did you say yes? yes? yes. Straight away? Yes. Okay. Robert, were you a patient here? Yes or no? No. Don't say rock and roll. Okay, 
So we have Robert. So, so, so when? When is, is this you? Are you calling us? Um, no, it's Robert. He said his name was Robert. No, no, no. There's, there's something else as well, isn't there? It's trying to come through. I don't you know. know this witch thing. We've had We're... more response off of Robert oh, than we have when, haven't we? We have, though, haven't we? He said his name. Yeah. I was going to say, she's going to be soon, haven't we? Okay, all right. Um, okay. Do you need help? If you need help, Robert, say help. If you need help, Robert, say help. Do you need our help, Robert? Say help if you do. If you don't need our help, say go. If you don't need our help, say go. <gasps> go! Oh dear, that was very clear to me. Did you hear go? That, yeah, Did you hear it? Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Okay. You don't need our help. Okay, do you mean us harm, Robert? Yes or no? Can't work out that one out. Mm -hmm. Do you mean us harm, Robert? Yes or no? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who would Robert be? Who is Robert? Well, what is Robert up there? And they're making that. Sorry. Yeah. Did you hear it? Mm -hmm. It was a. You, you know, we spoke of Robert earlier, didn't we? Yeah. Yes, did we? Yes. Well, yeah, Rob, we spoke yes. of Robert, uh, uh, Robert Evans, who was made yes. by... Oh! Our... Okay. Gwen. Right, right. Gwen Evans. A first for most haunted live and British television. For the first time, the device known as Frank's Box is being used in an attempt to communicate with the spirit. Stand by for the final part of tonight's most haunted live, The Village of the Damned, after this. Robert, if you're here as well, say your name again, Robert. Say your name again. Oh! Hey! If you need help, Robert, say help. If you don't need our help, say go. Yeah. Oh! Go. Hello and welcome back to the final part of tonight's Most Haunted Live, The Village of the Damned. Remember, we are live with you every night until Friday night, midnight, Halloween, from this former mental asylum in North Wales. It has been a fascinating night. Let's go now for the last time to Yvette Fielding, the investigation team, and the climax of tonight's vigil. Good luck, guys. I hope you get something. Right, you already ready? are. We, we are getting whistling constantly up here now. Okay, you ready? Yep. Okay. Come on, smash your window. It's the most creepiest noise. It is a weird noise, isn't it? Okay. Who are you? Who's here in the room with us now? What was that? Like a check. Check yeah. something. Tell me again. Who, what's your name? What's your name? I want you to do something. I want you to affect Carl and Stuart and Brian upstairs. Tell me yes or no if you can do this. Did you just 
just hear that? What, a, a sound down there? No, it sounded like a woman or a little... <laughs> In here? You did? Yeah. David, did you hear that? In, coming from this? No, no, coming from in there. It could have been water, but it sounded like a, very much like a woman yeah, going, uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's Something there. I'll just take my earpiece out so I can hear everything really clearly. If... Carl, are you OK? Are you OK, Carl? What was that? What was that? What was that? Did, Nothing that down here. Okay. What the heck? We heard you up there. Are you OK? It's all kicking off up here. We've got noises, we've got whistles, we've got something just got thrown. I haven't got a clue what it was. OK, we'll just keep calling out down here. OK, well, something touched me right on the head as well just a minute ago. Be careful. We'll keep calling out. Keep going. Okay. Show yourselves, whoever you are. Come Show on. yourselves. Come on, do something. Do something else. Show yourselves. I don't know. I can't, I can't make it out. Do something else to Carl, to Brian and to Stuart. Throw something else. Brian out loud. Something Did you just get something thrown at you? Something just got thrown at us right there and then. And Thank you for that. Stairwell. I just asked them to throw something that second. Right, well, there's a webcam at the top of the stairwell and there's a webcam on us. So, literally, if there's anything in that webcam, it would have caught it at the top of the stairs. OK, OK. Throw something again at them. Crying out loud. Throw something again at them now. Something's being thrown at us. I don't know what it is and it's coming from that area. Are you finding this interesting? <laughs> OK. Throw something again. Do it now. Bow, go, Bennett. Did you hear that? Did you just get something thrown at you now? Oh, it's it's constant. We've just had three. Just We've had sure one, then two, and then one okay. literally about three or four seconds ago. Kieran wants to know: Have you all got your earpieces out? Uh, I, I've got my earpiece in, but that's uh, I've got no. I can take it out. I've got nothing on it though. Kieran's I'm saying, could you please take it out? To, to um, the, the truck, not to you. Okay. Can you throw What's something that? again, please? What's that? Throw oh, something yeah, again, please. I can see it. I can see it. At Carl, Brian, and Stuart. Go on. We're, seeing, we're all seeing something now, and it's in the. What is it? What is it? What is it? Is it? Is it a figure? Well, they're getting good stuff, aren't they? Yeah, it's all up there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Bizarre, though. There's one... I saw something in that room. I saw something that is walking, room. isn't it? Room. Definitely. Okay. We've all seen something go into the, to a room, and we'll walk into the room now. Okay. Right. Thank you for this, whoever you are. What's the, what's the matter? Well, I think I stumbled or something, or, or what? Can you it, touch one right? of the three of them, but make it really hard? Right, something, something has just pushed, um, pushed Brian and like, something's been thrown at the back of him. Like, pushed, pushed me back. And we just asked for, um, the spirits to, um, touch you, but really, really hard. One of them, somebody to touch one of you, really hard. Well, that's, that's Brian, something's just, 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 just literally Jeff, pushed Brian. Yes, seconds ago. If they can do that, then they can say their name okay. into one of their ears. Oh. Can you say your name into one of the gentleman's ears? Say it loud, right into their ears. Say your name, please. Say your name. Say you say I'm really cold now. Yeah, it's sitting still. Too, it is. It? Yeah. You say, say your name. Is somebody calling people's names out? <gasps> what, what, are they what are you hearing? Well, I just thought I heard somebody say Robert, but I'm not sure if it came off of this radio. <laughs> I've just asked the spirit to say their name to you. Well, that's, 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 that, I heard Robert. Okay, another suggestion. Um, that was me. Oh, my God. Uh, no, look. Robert get up here now, get up here now. There's something, there is something up here. There is something up here. Can you here. run? There is definitely something up here. We can't make it. We're coming up, we get can't up come with the main camera. Oh shit, it's yes, so need everyone up here now. There's something up here, definitely. Which bloody way is it? Yeah. Go, Kieran, okay. with the torch. Where, where We're on our way. You alright, Chris? Yeah. 
Straight through those doors. I came you running down here. here. Right, wait, 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 wait. We were back there. I came running down because we saw somebody move in there and I thought definitely someone's up here because we've heard a lot of stuff. I was expecting to see someone in there. I went in there, went out. This is one of And when I got here, you could see it walking through that wall. How there. tall was it? Was it black? A, a, a man? It was just like a dark a shadow, just a dark shadow. And it was big. It was. What a tantalising place to leave it. We are trying to move that camera further down. It's at the absolute extension of its cable and we are nearly out of time. Very quickly from our guest, Clairvoyant Billy Roberts. Billy, what have you made of tonight? Fascinating. A similar device was invented uh, over the last 10 years in Russia called a biophonic assimilator. And the information, uh, the voices were very, very clear, much clearer than that. It all sounded the same to me, to be honest. But we have got a name, and of course they were much closer to it. Thank you yeah. for the moment, Billy Roberts. Let's go now to uh, Leslie Smith and to Fred Batt. Fred, of course, a specialist in the dark arts and demonology. Leslie, academic and historian. This name, Robert Evans. Have we got anything on that at all, Leslie? We've certainly got a Robert. We haven't got a Robert Evans yet. And um, Fred's been working away here too. Tell us who he is then, Fred. Well, we've got a guy called James Thompson who was convicted at Liverpool uh, for eight convictions. And he was sent to Denby. Uh, asylum under the name of Robert Williams. But he's not Robert so, Evans, but you know, no. he, I mean, so you think, what does that mean? It's quite interesting because he seems to be a schizophrenic character, unless, mm. of course, it's just because a convict is quite useful to have another name. He's quite useful. We've got Sir Robert Dudley, Elizabeth I, Great Passion, owned a castle nearby and was here as well. And we've also um, got a big landowner called Sir Robert Holmes as well here. So we're working away on it. But it's very exciting. We've had some terrific hits tonight, like Ablett, the name that we got earlier from Billy. He owned the land and he gave it as a gift to build the asylum on. This, this anger that was coming through earlier, that was a great hit from Billy. So we've had some tremendously exciting things coming through tonight. And, and experiments, again, as, terrific. And as with last night, if there's any information that emerges overnight from Fred, we can have it tomorrow on Well, the also, show. there's one other thing we found. Well, yes, Leslie went to the audience and found... Last night, if there's any information that emerges overnight from Fred, we can have it tomorrow. Well, on the also, show. there's one other thing we found. Oh, yes, Leslie course. went to the audience and found out what Carrig, who, the witch we had here last night, uh, was in Welsh, and it means stone, and they've had stones stone being thrown stone. at the windows. Although, again, to be fair, we, at almost every investigation, have stones thrown. Mm. We do, but, but it's but, just but, one of those things, you know, yeah. but, but stone is definitely Welsh carrying, mm. so it's quite interesting. Okay, thank you for the moment, Leslie and Fred. Okay. Let's go interactive now for the last time. Let's find out what you've been seeing and sensing. Your responses via Julian Clegg. Thanks, Paul, and another brilliant night on Interactive. Thank you so much for all your messages. Just, just a quick mention about Most Haunted Live Parties. So many of you having them this year, quite amazing. And lots of pets involved as well. Uh, Birkenhead, uh, Jackie, Lear and Neil are there. Their rabbit has been glued to the Tesla machine. Thank you for that. Uh, Nicole and Staley Bridge watching there with their friends. Glued to the seat as is Bubbles the cat. Thank you for those. And there's been many more as well. Now, themes of the night are a figure standing over Carl. A huge number of people have uh, got in touch with that one saying there's been a figure over Carl all evening. Thank you. Lots of our Welsh speakers also in touch saying that uh, die means two in Welsh. Thank you very much indeed uh, for that. And pronounced die as well. So that is an interesting theme. Let's go through the webcams and see what people have been saying and seeing. Uh, webcam 1, lots of cat sighting. A lot of people spotted a cat and many say it uh, has glaring eyes at times and a figure in white on webcam 1. Webcam 2, figures standing between the pillars and walking around them. Also lots of figures of dogs. You can see the team there gathered on that webcam at the moment, webcam 2. Uh, webcam 3, uh, a figure standing in the doorway but not coming into the room and some believe this figure has been dressed as a monk uh, through the evening on that one on webcam so you can see the camera panning through in that doorway there. Uh, webcam 4, a figure pacing back and forth in front of the window and multiple figures pacing up and down in the room as well. Finally, I leave you with a thought from Kaz and Danielle in Lancashire. They believe that uh, the Elizabeth that Brian's been talking about on the show tonight is in fact Elizabeth Demdike from Pendle Hill. Is Elizabeth Demdike here in North Wales? Have to keep watching for the rest of the week. 
More from Interactive tomorrow night. Paul, back to you. Thank you, Julian. And I really do not want the thought of Pendle Hill in my head as I'm about to go to bed. Let's go back now for the final time to Yvette Fielding and the team for a catch-up and a look back in a moment about what's happened tonight. Yvette, can you hear me? I can hear you, Paul. Sorry, but I might have to just sort of, like, cut off from you because we're getting a lot of strange stuff going on still. There's a lot of knocking and banging. Carl and, and Stuart and Brian... What? Did you not hear that? No. Go on. Did you hear Robert? Yeah. Right, here. Robert! It was. We have, honestly, it, it's just amazing that the stuff, I don't know if you saw it before, but we were calling out for things to happen to the guys, things were happening, and to actually see, I don't know if you, we were on air when Carl was explaining, a, a man, a dark shape of a man, walking through these walls. Just extraordinary, and we think it's the ghost of Robert, who was the gentleman in, in Brian's drawing, who was actually on the floor. Uh, I don't know if you remember, we talked about it at the beginning of the show, Paul. Of course, yeah, we've got a, a Robert Williams, right. which we've sourced. We've also got lots of other information coming through about stuff you discovered earlier. A huge amount of information tonight. Now, unfortunately, when you and Kieran relocated upstairs, the camera was on the absolute extension of its cable. You've mentioned that Carl saw a figure going through. Can he tell us what that looked like? Has he got any other details about what he saw or what Brian saw? Can you hear that, Carl? I can't, I can't hear the All right. Um, Paul saying, can you just I describe what you saw, the figure? Here? Yeah. Basically, we were at the far end. Um, Brian and Stuart said, can you see anything? I looked at, at this end of the wall, said nothing. They said, no, further down to the left. And it was a figure. Whistling. Go on. It was on. a figure. Slowly, literally, just looked like that. And literally, it was walking at that speed. Like there was nothing, and I started to run, and as I started to run, it, whatever it was, it was a dark figure and just went like this. Almost like you walked into the wall. I got to about here, with Brian and Stuart right behind me, I shone in there, and literally you saw the figure continue the walk. I do wonder if Yvette, Yvette, I do wonder right if that the... was in any way like what Brian sketched earlier, his psychic art we saw at the very top of the show, was it in any way like that? You, uh, Paul's asking, do you think it was the, the same shape, the same person that you drew earlier on? Very much so. It is the same person. Yeah, because of the height, you, you know, on certain stuff, it, it was a, a good life-sized figure, and I really do believe that that's, that's what we Robert. just experienced. Yeah. Any surname with him, Brian? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna bounce back and say we said it earlier, yeah. Evans. Okay, so you're saying that it's a Robert Evans. Yeah. That's him. Okay. There you go, Paul. So you've got a description, it's the same gentleman that Brian drew and it's a Robert Evans. And we've also got the Gwen from earlier on and all kinds of other information. How are you feeling now, Yvette? Because it must have been frustrating. You were downstairs with Frank's box, but there was so much going on upstairs. I, I, but what I loved was the fact that we were sat downstairs with Yvette's box. Um, and uh, and we, every time we asked for something to happen to the, to, to the chaps upstairs, something did happen. Um, which was absolutely amazing and within seconds of me saying throw something something was thrown and I love it when things like that happen It's oh. fantastic because you can't explain it and I should underline here that of course although Carl had his earpiece in for some of that He was hearing what the gallery was saying what the truck was saying not hearing what you were saying no. Yvette We're about to take a look at an astonishing light and night we've had the Tesla experiment We've had Frank's box and a whole lot more here Yvette and the team are your highlights. Thank you Spirits into the room, please. Use this energy now. Use I've got a pain in my chest. Has anybody else got a pain in their yeah. chest? You have. Yeah. Oh! What's the matter? I just grabbed all my hand. Strike. Holy shit! What? There was a window coming Somebody through. Went. Holy crap! Did you hear it? Did you hear that? Robert, if you're here as well, say your name again, Robert. Say your name again. Oh! Hey! If you don't need our help, say go. Yeah. Oh. Do something else to call. Get up here now. Get up here now. There's something. There is something up here. Absolutely amazing. And this is only night three of seven nights of paranormal investigation. Huge thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Billy Roberts, our guest clairvoyant.
Julian Craig and his interactive team, if you will. And of course, Fred Batt and our academic and historian, the lovely Leslie Smith. But above all, the people at the cutting edge, the people taking the risks, the people making it happen for us every night and all the way until Friday night Halloween. Yvette Fielding and the team, Carl Beattie, Dr. Kieran O'Keefe, Brian Shepherd, Cap, Stewart, and the whole gang who've been on the vigil tonight. Whoa! It has been an amazing night. We do thank you for your input tonight, all your communications to the investigations team, and of course to the interactive team. We are back tomorrow night, 8 p.m. on Living. Be there, most wanted live, Village of the Dam.